I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. All right, very good. The sound is pretty good. Yeah, your sound is not bad either. So we got this far. My friend helped me here. Nice. Hey, Max. It's David. Hey, hey, what's your Skype ID? Um, you know, I sent you a request. Oh, you did? I didn't see it. Hold on. D. Waller. D. No, David Waller. Jr. What's your David name? Waller Jr. Well, I found you online, Max Steinberg. Right, but it's, but a, it's, a, Max. it's a different one. I am Max two four or five or seven, which is. I sent that to your. your I have like three Skype accounts. I will use only one of three. So I know. sent you the Skype. His Skype account. It is uh, David Waller Jr. <laughs> I tried it, and by some reason, there is too I'm many. I'm sorry, it's, it's D. Waller Jr. Yeah, D. I thought D. Waller. Mm -hmm. I tried, and there is several of them. There is its popular name, I guess. D. Waller Jr. Yes, uh, there is like five of them or ten. And there's a picture of Angela. There's a picture of Angie on there. Hold on. D. W A L L E R? Yes. And then Junior. J R. Junior. J R. By some reason, it refuses to find any today, but uh, in the past, it found many. So I guess we will fix it later. We will. I'm going to go get one. Okay. Um, Three, right now, the first two hours. Uh, how do you want to do it? You can uh, participate if you like, especially in the beginning to get the introductions going. You are very good with introductions. All right. And David and Lana are going to be here. One of them is going to be my person on the bed uh -huh. for acquisitions and stuff. I wonder where are the, all the students? I, I don't know. Like, Twelve of them, and I don't see any. It's strange. I know. I never received anything from Christine Rivasposo. She said she sent me a hundred dollars, but I didn't get it. Okay, John is here. We should. I won't talk to her personally. I'll talk to her personally. I have to step out. Um, but uh, I will be back in, in a few minutes. Um, okay. Alrighty. Thank you. Right. Is my, uh, can you see me? Uh, hold on, let me see. Um, I see, yes, I see the top of your head wonderfully. Like your head. Oh, the top of my head. <laughs> Let's see if we can remedy that. How's that? A little better? Um, yeah, I see. Uh, move a little bit behind, uh, yep. Uh, ask David to do it because, Dave, can you help? Yeah, of course. Here we go. And move a little bit behind, so people should see your, your belly point. No, no, the head should touch the top of the screen, and the bottom of the screen should show the hands. So you have to move behind, because when you show Reiki, you have to show the hands. Oh, you have to, you move okay, you have to show it the screen. Well, here, look at the table. See the table? Yeah, table is perfect. That's where we're gonna be. Yeah, that's where we're gonna be. Oh, if you do the table, can you stand by the head? The head will be up, up here. All right. At that time, you have to like move your camera a little up so your head is not cut off. Right now, your nipples are cut off. Any, everything above nipples is cut off. Like this. Well, what I'm going to do is, before we, before I do the table, I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move the table up closer. Yeah, okay. we'll fix it when it's appropriate, when it's time. But. But you will have another person, so somebody has to adjust that because you can't really right, right. and do on the table with the same position of the camera. You have to move it yes, around. But that won't happen until the second two hours. So all right, maybe Let's, not until the very last hour because yeah, um, we're gonna have a lot to cover before then. Yeah, somebody will have to help you with the camera. Let's we, we, we can remind you because we will see it. Okay. All right. All right. I'll step out. I need to do uh, my brush my teeth and stuff, but I'll be back. I wonder where the students are. But well, one of them joined in and then disappeared. Okay. Um, so let me 
I'm going to be making coffee for my guests. All right, wonderful. Actually, come on and make your coffee. <laughs> I was going to eat that, but no. Kiko's coming today. Who are you sending to? Who are you writing to? Um, okay. Can you see that? We don't need to block the light from that, do we? That's not super okay. I'm not backward there, so the head will be down on the on the. We well, see you can do. I, perhaps you can make the it bigger. I don't know. <clears throat> I've never used Zoom before. Well, see, so. for them, they Zoom. <laughs> Yes. Oh, look at all that. Yeah. Oh. What kind of cup? Oh, so she's going to have that too? Yeah. Very good. Did you have yours? I had one, and I'm going to have another. Oh, good. I have, I have got to have more coffee than just one. Um, where do you go? Justin. Hey, Justin. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I, I just see your name. That's all I see. I'm not sure if my camera's working. Though. Okay. It just says just a full screen. Okay. I have to bring this down. I have my computer precariously because I have to elevate it. I, I couldn't find any way to elevate it except for pillows. Pillows are not the best. <laughs> Am I early? No, actually, you're right on time, but everybody else is late. Hmm. Oh, Max is here somewhere. When uh, the link on my phone worked just fine, but when I tried to access it through my email on my laptop, I had a really hard time. I had to type in everything manually. Oh, well, that sounds unusual. This so, is the first time I've ever used Zoom. I, once I typed it in, 
it just fired up and it downloaded and did its thing there in maybe a minute and a half. But I had to go through and instead of just having the easy click and just did everything for you, hey? Yeah. Are you but in Canada? I am. Do I have a strong accent? You said A. Oh, did I? Yeah. yeah. So I, I picked that up. Where at in Canada are you? I'm in Alberta. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Alberta. What a beautiful area. Yeah, it is beautiful. I'm, I'm super. I have, I have people I channel with in Saskatchewan, oh, Alberta, yeah. British Columbia, all the way yeah. out there. And so it's really cool. I love it. Yeah. And of course, a lot of people in Toronto, Montreal, and Quebec. So. Yeah, that's where the bulk of the population is. Yeah, right? Nova Scotia, I have a couple. Oh, right on. Am I the first Albertan? Yes, you're the first Albertan. Wow. I'm super lucky. Yes. But I have like, interesting enough, I have like two or three in Saskatchewan. What part of Saskatchewan? Um, if you named this town, I would be able to tell you. Oh, but I, I'm not sure there's many of them. Regina, Saskatoon? Uh, no, it's not that. Weyburn? It's close to that. Uh, he gave me a name. It's sort of out in the country. It's sort of rural. Mm -hmm. And then he has a couple friends that also channel with me uh, from the very same area. So it's all, they're all from the same area. Wow. But it's very cool. They have their, um, they have uh, sweat lodges and they're of Indian background. So it's very cool. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. What tribe? A lot of information about the Indians coming out right now. So it's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. So, I yes, I think we have at least a few people that are supposed to be here. Whether they'll get here or not, I don't know. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? I've been channeling for three uh, years and a little bit. May of 2013 is when I first uh, broke through with channeling with Max. And then by September of 2013, about a year ago, uh, three years ago to the, almost to the day now, I he put, made a site and put a lot of my channelings on it. And then we started the webinars in November of 2013. And then I started my business late January of 2013. Wild. Good so, for you. So I haven't even been doing, doing this professionally for three years yet. I hear you. So, but God has been good. And obviously when I didn't even know what channeling was until it started. So... I didn't even know what it was up until a couple months ago. I didn't know what channeling was. I was channeling and I was going, what the heck, what just happened? So, and he explained it to me and, and um, the messages were so good. He started recording them every week and he started to uh, videotape them. And so now here I am, I'm doing this for a living. This is what I do. I would have never, ever guessed that four years ago. I hear you. I would be like, yeah, you're, you're out of your gourd. Yeah, so, I, hear, I hear you there. It's crazy what he has in store for us. Yes, but it's like, <clears throat> now it's like, all right, this is great. This is my highest excitement, and I'm moving forward with it. So. Yeah, I hear you. I, it became a highest excitement that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> Wicked. I know. <laughs> I think one of the coffees is ready. Do you want it? Here, what do you want to put in it? I 
Oh no, do you and um, uh, I'll get mine in a little bit. There we go. Oh, morning, Jim. Who's there? Jim, it's Eileen. Can you hear me? Uh, Eileen, I see your name. That's all I see. Okay. I see your name, Eileen. Hi, all. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here today, and I'm looking forward to this great Reiki class. I'm so excited. Yes, actually, the Reiki class is really nice. It um, it's adds some energy to your system and some um, healing to your life. So it's a very cool thing. Hi, Max. Hello. Hi, Eileen. Um, Justin and Eileen are here. Hi, Justin. Uh, uh, Eileen, Joanna, Justin, and TC. I forgot who is T what uh, stands behind TC. Do you remember? I don't see them on my screen. Yeah, they don't show up. I can put their boxes up, but um, because they don't have their video, we can't see them. Hi, hey guys. Can you on, uh, on uh, like show up yourself? Can you speak uh, up and show up yourself? Eileen, Jay, Eileen, uh, Joanna, Justin, and TC. Hey, yeah. thank you, Joanna. Okay. I don't see her. Where do you? Where is that? Where am I supposed to look? You can see her. I I can. Um, no, I can see myself and you. That's it. Um, can uh, someone click for you? There is on the top. On the top, there is a, a speaker of you, and then there is like my many boxes you have to yes there's a bunch of boxes yeah click on bunch of boxes okay what what about a uh, share screen no just just video on the bottom of the screen there is oh, start video start. yeah start video okay yeah all okay. right camera yeah yeah mine's on i can see myself and i see eileen as a word oh Me. Do you see Joanna? I do see Joanna. I can't see Joanna yet. I don't know why. You sure you're supposed to? Right. Um, Someone will have to look at the buttons. Justin and popped in and disappeared. Actually, I, I expected about 12 people. I don't know where everybody else is. How many people? About 12. Wow. 12 people. That's cool. But I don't know. They signed up and didn't show up, I guess. Um, I'm, yeah, I think I did. yeah. Good morning, Max. How are you? Hey, that's Justin from Alberta. From Alberta. Hi, Just making Justin. a coffee at the moment. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm doing too. I have my guests making coffee here. If I drop an A bomb, don't hold it against me. Yes. <laughs> What's an A bomb? A. Because I'm Canadian, I always say A. Eh? Oh, got it. Okay. Yes, it's I. I picked up people from Canada because he said it once. He's pretty good at not saying it, though. Yeah, I'm pretty self-conscious of it. Don't worry about it. I sort of think it's cute. I like it, but that's. Okay, um, I will share this re recording uh, ability with others. So please help me back up the recording in case I lose it. I see, should I hit my record button? Uh, you probably should, should uh, I don't know, should not, I guess. I, okay, because I have all these buttons all over the place, but I don't know, I, I'm just on uh, chat. That is the one that's open. Okay. okay look, look now, can you see many boxes? I see a bunch of boxes in my little square up in the corner there. I, how do you make that big? On the right top, uh, speaking yeah. view versus uh, gallery view. Ah, there, I can see myself bigger now, but 
And there's a bunch of little boxes. Is that what you're talking about? On the top right, there is speaker view and um, gallery view. And you can switch between those. All right. I, I made myself bigger. Hold on. There's other, but nothing else is uh, working. All right. That's fine. Have you and Max been friends for a while? We've been friends for at least five or six years, maybe a little longer. Right on. How long have we known each other, Max? I don't know. Um, you can calculate. We st I guess we started channeling right after we met. That was May of 2013, but we knew each other before then. Not, not for long, maybe a couple of months, I would say. Okay, so three years, four yeah. years? Yeah. In this lifetime, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because whenever we met, you liked my treatments and you asked me to start to help you to uh, come to your house. That's right. So, but I so think you, it was before that. You guys met on a professional basis. You started healing them that to begin with? Yes. Oh, okay. We, we met at Reiki Share, which is shared Reiki with each other. We Reiki each other and make each other feel better. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yes, we met in a situation where we were sharing Reiki with one another. Excellent. Yes, it was very cool. Thank you for asking. Uh, please keep asking questions. And we start official uh, class. I just... Okay. I allowed everyone to record, so if you have a space on your computer, I think you need about gigabyte for this class. So if, if you have a gigabyte, you can please press the record button on the top, top on the bottom right. Jim, don't do it. I don't want to pollute your computer. All right. Uh, and then um, I'm, I'm recording too, so hopefully we'll have the recording. Um, I did something that took my picture away and brought your picture in twice. So I don't know. But I see on the side Justin, Eileen, and Joanna. But I don't, I don't see pictures. I just see their names. Okay. I'm not that familiar with the thing. Oh, hey, Joanna. Thank you for showing I, I can see Joanna now. Great. Hi. How are you? So is anybody recording? I am oh, recording. Yeah. Oh, thank I you. I am as well. Thank you, guys. All right. So we start officially the class. Sorry for the delay. Uh, I was waiting for people to join. We have expect about 12 people who signed up and we have only three, oh. four, four now. We have only four, four students, two teachers, four students. The ratio of teacher to student is one to two, <laughs> but they will be recording. So, um, uh, the class is uh, Reiki 1A, and please ask questions, prompt. It's much easier to speak when we have, um, we have a conversation. And um, let's first do the introductions, and then I will talk more about what it is and how to accept it and so on. We have a, a standard uh, set of questions which we need to, in, uh, to, uh, to, to discuss and to give you some training, and then we'll give you some initiations. And there is more and more and more. It's a, it's a starting point on a big path of, of energy healing. So yeah, my, my Reiki, I was always uh, sensitive to energies. And when uh, the energies are in the room are changing, I'm very sensitive to that. Like, like I feel people becoming angry. And even now, nowadays on Facebook, I don't really need to, to talk to a person on Facebook through the chat. I just need to look at their box. I already know what they're feeling. And not specifically the, their thoughts, but the, the connection to them, is it positive or negative? Are they optimistic? Are they pessimistic? That's just sufficient just to focus on that box on the chat. It, it's amazing. I, I notice these days, like, hmm, the mood goes down. 
and then the mood goes up. Wonderful. So uh, I was always sensitive, and uh, I have many children. So when children get get down, I I lift them up. I kind of hey cheer them up. It's like typical American cheer up. It's, I just noticed Russians, Russians. Um, Often it's like traditional to bring the mood down. Not all of them. Now people who come here learn to bring the mood up. So, so that energy was always around. I, I liked play, playing with energies with hands and it's wonderful. But as a scientist, I was kind of looking for that, but I was afraid. I was afraid for many years until I was so afraid that my organs started to hurt. Like I, I get stress and pain. So, um, so when it become really, became really painful, I was looking for ways and I was always suspicious of mainstream medicine. So I was looking for alternative healers and uh, I came to Reiki as a, as a patient. So I first I found a healer. How do you exist with you? I will mute Jim, I will mute you for now because you, I can't mute actually. How do I mute Jim? There's something wrong. Can you hear me? Yes, you're good. All right. There is no way. It doesn't allow me to mute you. But it's okay. What, what is wrong there? Now Jim disappeared completely. I can oh, see you. Uh, they're helping me to get the camera working. I, I, we can see you fine. You can see me? Yeah, we can see you just fine. Oh, oh we can't see my, me from this side. Oh. I, how about click F5 and reload? Just reload the whole window. Maybe it's just messed up. Well, that's all right. You don't need to see me, but as long as you see me, I'm fine. You're good now. Continue. You're, you're, all, you're good all the time. <laughs> as long as you can see me and I can talk, that's fine. Yes. I'm I don't sure. need to see myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But I don't know how to work this particular media yet. Yeah. Go ahead, Max. All right. Um, so I went, went to a healer, and it was energy healer. She didn't call herself Reiki healer, but basically it was a, a Russian version of Reiki. And nowadays, nowadays I realize all the energy healing modalities, they look very similar to each other. So, so they all work with the same energy. So, and then I became very dependent on the healers. I have to go, had to go to them like at least once a month and then sometimes once a week. And, um, and that allowed me to work in mainstream stressful conditions. Uh, and that upgrades your, being treated with Reiki upgrades your, your spiritual uh, body. Um, and then I met my healer, Barbara, who became my teacher. And what served, and actually, I've, I don't remember what served, I think, yeah, I was studying the things, and I went into extraterrestrials topic. And then only after I went into extraterrestrials and was there for a while, I realized I want to become a healer myself. And for me, it was a huge discovery that you could be a healer. Like you perceive yourself as a researcher, explorer, uh, and then doing the healing to humans, it's, I don't know, maybe for you it's, it's natural. For me, it was a big self-discovery that you can be a healer. So now I, I'm sure everyone is a healer. Everyone. Everyone can be a healer. Yes. Everyone is a healer because you heal yourself all the time. You work with your own energies. It could be subconscious, it could be conscious, but you work with your own energies for sure. All right. And um, so, and then Barbara became my teacher and then Barbara taught Jim as well. Part of his teaching was from Barbara Carlton in, in Rochester. And then I joined uh, Reiki Share. Reiki Share is when many people come together uh, and they're on the tables and um, we like have three tables, 10 people and someone on the three people on the table and others work and we take turns. So it, it was, I think it was weekly on Fridays and, um, and it was wonderful. It's somebody's home and then we moved to YMCA 
and that is huge. Uh, being with other light workers who do the same thing, share the energy, share, just realizing how universal it is. Have a support group of people who think alike. It was wonderful. So that's my path to Reiki. And then at some point, oh, I could be a Reiki teacher. It was another self discovery, right? Not only a healer could, could teach that. Wow. So it, it takes internal growth and it takes a lot of release of all beliefs, of, of all faith, fears, but um, you get there eventually. You have to build, build up your optimism. You have to build up your optimism, right? Uh, initially, it's so, so scary, right? <laughs> all these things are so scary. So that's my path. Um, who wants to introduce themselves? So, prepare your story and um, We'll not publish the stories if you don't like them. So we will um, ask you and then cut off. We'll do that only the instruction will be published. And uh, we also s always cut off the personal initiations part. Jim, would you like to tell your Reiki story? Um, well, I started, my Reiki story is sort of long. Are you sure you want me to tell it? Uh, uh, <laughs> it in three minutes. I, I, will, uh, <laughs> I will make it shorter. I uh, had a very good job. And then I lost it and I was very depressed. And that was like five, six years ago. And my friends decided that I needed to go to Reiki to feel better. So in January of the following year, I lost my job November 1st of uh, 2011. And so on January of 2012, they started to bring me to Reiki classes and I would be getting a treatment and feeling so much better and it would take away the depression and it would make me feel alive and I was able to look for jobs again and uh, feel better about myself. But I was working and working and working trying to find a job and for someone my age, that's not very easy because I was older and I had made a, a good a good salary and so and I was in a higher management position so I was overqualified for most of the things that I uh, that I applied for so I was getting depressed and I was spending all my money it took me two years before I I found that I started my Reiki business but before that I started doing Reiki after about two and a half months of uh, getting Reiki, feeling how it was, uh, a lady named Robin Walsh said, oh, you can help me do Reiki after you get your treatment. And so I was, I decided to help her out and she discovered that I was a natural Reiki, Reiki healer. So I started to learn from her first, uh, Robin, I did Reiki 1 and 2 with her, and then I did Reiki 3 with Barbara Carlton. I Reiki 3 and 4 with Barbara Carlton. So, but then I started to get a lot of confidence in my healing during that period of time because a lot of people were responding to the energy that was coming through, and I was letting it come through from God and the universe and everywhere and I was getting a lot of really really good results and I was starting to get people that actually wanted to come to my house for Reiki I was and I would uh, go to other people's houses also I went to Max's house for Reiki for him he had his own table and everything so I would go there but um, yes that's my story of Reiki and then when I met Max um, I started to feel the energies that were all around him, which were alien, and I didn't even know that. But eventually I started channeling with Max, and he started to, he was amazing about it because he started to record it and, and make a site for it and different things that I would have never, ever done, and started to videotape it and telling me that, encouraging me to do it more, encouraging me that the information was good. So because of Max, I continued to do it. And I had my first public channeling in, 
Was it September or October of 2013? Oh, I can't hear you. October, I would say. October of 2013, which is just amazing because that's less than six months after I started channeling. So, May, June, July, August, September, it is six months. Six months after I started channeling, I'm already doing it in public, and that's because of Max. Um, so thank you, Max. I appreciate your believing in me and the information. So that's my story, and um, I made it very fast. <laughs> All right, let's do others. Um, folks, can you... Um unmute yourself and tell your stories and how did you get here you want me to go first max go ahead okay this is eileen speaking just hold on a second uh joanna if you like to type it in i can read it out aloud go ahead when i came to the hukalo site that is when i my interest in reiki um began again because um when I was much younger, um, I was around uh, a lot of Reiki healers. One of them also healed me after an operation. I was very impressed with that, but my life at that time was uh, uh, in business, so I did not have uh, the um, impetus to continue with the Reiki on my own. But now uh, that I've come to the Hukalo site, I'm seeing so many uh, great things about this, uh, and I want to learn it um, for myself and for others. And also I have been told uh, by uh, channeling sources that I have been a great healer in past lives, and that I should certainly bring this forward again, uh, because I would, it would be a significant contribution. So. I'm here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you, Max. Jim. Thank you, Eileen. That was beautiful. I wanted just to have a little uh, sense of um, specifics. What's, what's your favorite color, if, if you don't mind? Uh, right now, I think my favorite color is turquoise. Uh -huh. uh, turquoise to also the blue, um, the sort of the Blue, uh, sky blue, uh, turquoise attracts me a great deal. Um, those would be in my life the significant colors at this point. In fact, today I was looking for my turquoise blouse to wear and I couldn't find it. So I put on my gold blouse, which I like also. Mm -hmm. um, I respond to um, gold as well, um, silver, gold. Um, green, um, certain shades of green, especially Kelly green, uh, very much. Other shades of green, not so much. Kelly green, I love very much. Um, I also do rose very well. Rose, uh -huh. uh, I like that a lot. Um, uh, the light pink, uh, not as much. That's why I say the rose, the deeper color of pink is uh, uh, very, very, um, that goes with my nature. Thank you. It, it, it gives a nice, nice, nice ways to connect. Thank you. Yeah, my, my favorite, ever favorite is turquoise. Yes. Oh. It's 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 somewhere between the heart chakra and throat chakra. It's higher heart chakra. Oh. Hmm. All right. Um, thank you. Um, who who wants to go next? And uh, John, if you would like to type in the, in the chat box, I can read it aloud. What brought you to here, what's your interest in the, um, in Reiki and energy healing? Who goes next? James, Joanna, to see. Joanna is muted. I don't think she, she she can speak, but but she can type. I would say. And what happened to Justin? Uh, TC came. TC came on with a message. Can you hear me? TC, no, no. Can you hear me? This is, um, we can't hear you. Okay, I guess you can type. Can you just type your, I can read it aloud. Yes. James, Joanna. TC came on with another message. Neither my camera nor the mic are working. Okay. Nice, you can, he okay, you can hear us. 
All right. Next time, try to to play with. Uh, actually, on the microphone, on the to the right of the microphone, there is like arrow up, and you can click on it and choose another microphone that might work. If they, if if you if you if you have multiples. All right. I guess that's all introductions we got. <laughs> don't don't worry for now. We we can do introductions next time or in the middle of the webinar. Another message has come in from TC. He says, it says that my, that the host has stopped working his PC or his uh, camera or something. So maybe something from the host side can help him or her. Ah, host side? Mm. Yeah, that, that, is, that is the message that came across the screen. Oh. Mm. On the host, that means your side. Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, but there's not much you can do. I can mute and mute. Unmute. Uh, TC TC is now unmuted. Yeah. But camera is not is not working. All right. I guess you know whenever it works, you can uh, you can introduce yourself, and also you can type in the chat if you like. We can. Well. Okay. I think it's, we're not used to this media yet, and there's probably all kinds of little secrets that we don't know quite yet. Yeah, something of that sort, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Sorry about that. My, oh, I can uh, hear you now. Just my, my laptop decided to restart uh -huh. and update. Oh. Oh. Usually it doesn't use this, but I disable all updates works great all right hey justin how you doing max has everybody else gone um Every, we're all going okay do you want to talk about yourself justin oh sure if it's, <laughs> my, if, if what, if it's my what's turn? your interest in reiki and energy healing um well it kind of starts off when i was a child um, I've always been different. I fit in with every group, but not all the way. And, uh, I didn't figure this out until just this week. I was watching some of the videos that you had posted with, uh, Reiki three classes and it showed some of the symbols and I didn't even understand that there were symbols involved. But when I had moments when I was at school where I wasn't sure about things, I'd be, you know, walking around the school at recess and or around the schoolyard. And I'd be thinking about stuff that we tried to learn in class. And I would be drawing things in the air. And I remember thinking, I was like, man, this, I'm not drawing my math question or I'm not drawing the science I wonder what it is that I'm drawing and I never really understood it and a couple of my friends had walked up to me one day they're like man what are you drawing in the air I was like I don't know but when I draw it and I walk through it it helps me think more clearly and they're like man that's pretty weird you should stop doing that and no, you shouldn't. <laughs> well, and had I known that now, you know, but I mean, I had no idea. And I, I didn't even know how I learned it or where it came from. All I know is that I can do it. And I didn't even figure it out until just this past week. Um, I had a pretty profound experience when I was 23 that lasted about three months that I've been asked not to speak about. So until I get, until I get permission, I'm not going to speak about it, but it, it was pretty impressive and it impacted me for, you know, like the, the, the next 11 years, I'm 34 now, uh -huh. <clears throat> two years ago, I was in the oil field and, uh, I owned a large company and I was doing really well. And, you know, I had a bunch of employees, but it's miserable. And I hated it and I didn't like the negativity and it was really affecting me. And uh, one of 
uh, my employees, who's just a wonderful old fella, uh, dropped dead of a stroke at 50. And it really made me think like, whoa, what's going on? You know, if we can just drop dead whenever. And he was so healthy. One of my healthiest employees. And, uh, you know, within a week, I sold out to my partner and decided to find a different path. And that was in uh, the winter, January. And then that summer, I witnessed a terribly acrobatic vehicle accident. And I stopped to, uh, to help out, to see if anybody needed help. And sure enough, there was one fellow there that did need help. And I did everything I could to get him out of the ditch you know, alive and everybody showed up and we got him loaded up and the ambulance took him away. And it always, it it stuck with me and I didn't understand why, because from a physical standpoint, I did everything that I could uh, to save him, you know, and I, and I didn't feel bad about how I approached it or about the care that I gave him. but for some reason I couldn't get it off my mind, you know, and let, uh, not that I drink often, but you know, that anytime I would have uh, a drink, I would get wicked flashbacks. Wow. And just like he had this really terrible death rattle and I, and it stuck with me every time. I was like, what the heck is going on? But this should not be bothering me, at least not to this depth. Because I've I've saved people before, and uh, I've never had to deal with anything like this, and and I didn't understand it. And it took me on a completely different path than I had ever understood before. I have been researching all kinds of stuff. The rabbit hole that I went down has been so deep. I I can't believe it. I've always been a bright kid, but I never knew that I had this much room inside my head for material, for all of the stuff that I've learned. Everything from uh, permaculture, which is uh, greenhouses and vertical farming, to alternate electricity, to generating electricity, building electric generators. I understand, I'm a, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say a specialist, but I'm definitely very good at understanding different forms of liquids and how they work with one another. Uh, I understand really well on how to, I'm a, I took power engineering, which is, uh, you know, basically converting steam into electricity using a, an apartment sized generator. And uh, so I, I understand the properties of water significantly. And I've always been kind of energy sensitive, but I didn't realize how much until I started watching the videos with Jim and Max. There was times where Max, I, I love your mind. I love how intuitive you are and inquisitive you are. So please don't take this the wrong way. When, uh, when I was watching videos, I was watching them and you were asking questions to whoever it may be. And sometimes when, uh, when you were asking them, they were, they, they weren't from like a completely, uh, humble position. And it kind of didn't sit right with me. And I was like, oh, I don't understand this. I, I love this guy. This guy's awesome. I, I love the, his mind. I love the way he thinks. So why is this bothering me? And then I watched last week's or two weeks ago, however long it was, the episode with uh, Zach. And Zach 
was channeling and he had a break in uh in the channel like the the connection was broken and right away max put up his hands and he started to chant and i stood up i walked around my condo i cleaned my entire condo i got out of the got out and i went for a huge walk and i came back I said, what just happened how come, where did all this energy just come from? I, I do not understand what just happened here. Uh, and then I, I backed up the video because I hadn't been watching it the entire time. And I watched the connection break happen. And then I watched Max's channeling happen again. And the exact same thing happened. I stood up and I got this sudden rush of energy and I had to walk around again. And I was like, oh my God, I understand. It's like, this man puts out wicked energy and even even on the faintest amount i can pick it up yeah and and when the intent is strong man it is really strong yes. and i and, and i didn't realize how strong of an antenna i am until i figured that out and that was just a week ago yeah and then this, the spiritual journey that I've been on for the past week has just been absolutely ridiculous. Thank the Lord for, and I had to forgive a lot of, uh, a lot of the people that had hurt me so that I could continue because that was the path that I was told that I had to take that I wouldn't be, able to heal unless I forgave everybody that had done me wrong. So that's been kind of what I've been up to for the last little, little while here. Just uh, clearing up all my karmic debts so that I can continue on the path that I was supposed to do. So thank you very much, Max and Jim. You honestly do not understand how profound of an impact you've had on my life everything from connecting with spiritual guides to just ending up here where i'm at right now wonderful oh wonderful thank you for sharing um, thank you so much appreciate it nice feedback because um <laughs> you, you you can see how i'm un unconfident i am i am i don't know if, jim are you confident in I'm not confident in myself, but I'm confident in the things that come through. Right. Because I know they know what they're doing. Sometimes, you see, sometimes I start out talking and they take over because I'm not so good at it. Uh, I've noticed quite a bit, you know, is that everybody that comes through isn't a 3D, right? Uh, some, some are, actually. Some, some are, but not all of them. Right. We had like some time ago, we had 3D people coming through, but very rarely. And whenever, I don't know if you guys have watched over or whatnot, but that whenever there's negativity and you look at Jim's face, you can see the strain on the connection. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, the, that's, I noticed it too, yeah. I, I just started picking that up. I started going back through on some of the videos that had bothered me and I was watching Jim say, like, Oh man, it's like, if it affects the being that's coming through as well, but uh, oh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so young in my understanding of energy that it, I, but I'm picking up pretty quick and yeah, it's, it it's affects them. Profound. Any kind of negative energy affects the whole situation. Yes. Yeah, I, I learned if I if I want to know the answers, I got to be very diplomatic. If I uh, put out any suspicion, the connection just breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any negativity at all. All right. I, and I've seen it a couple times. And I, when I when when I watched and I and I had noticed it, uh, and I was thinking, you know, that he's not being malicious. He doesn't have bad intent. He's just being inquisitive. 
And that's that, I think that's your mind because you, you're just oh, a curious sure. person. For sure. Right. And sometimes when they're questioned, if it's not from the most humble standpoint, you really see the strain on them. At least I notice it. Yeah, I had huge problem. Uh, I couldn't speak to, every time I spoke to the creator or to Jesus, my microphone was muted. <laughs> you know, everybody could ask questions. When I go, it just... <laughs> uh. So I had to do some workarounds to finally get it, get through that that break point. Obviously, there was some something happening there. Uh, my state of mind wasn't right. My question wasn't fully on the proper vibration. It was not hello vibration, but it was discordant. Yeah. So to break through that muting of the microphone, spiritual, I just I start to chant. And chant is very pure. Mm -hmm. And then microphone is not muted. So that was my trick to, to block this spiritual blockage, to unblock the spiritual blockage. Chanting and, with intent. I'll, I'll, I'll just add, chanting with intent is absolutely. very powerful. And um, if the intent is higher, there, it's not as powerful. Justin, his higher self is a very powerful being as well. I can imagine. Uh, Yogananda, and he's a chanter from way back. And um, he's very, whenever uh, Max adds his chanting to the messages of Yogananda, he gets blown away into the, ed to the edge of the universe sometimes. So <laughs> it's wow. a beautiful thing. I guess That's it is my pride, but uh, I would cut it out and I would speak for myself. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't stand on the shoulders of um, famous names. Mm. <laughs> I, I, actually, it's, it, it actually helps when you speak for without relying on, on the famous name because it's just purer. It's purer. Yeah. It's well, purer. Otherwise, you've been judged and that judgment clouds the perception. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I said it. I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, about myself, uh, the clearest revelation to me came again in channel and somebody told me that you know what they see in me is uh, vulnerable perseverance and that combination of two things is uh, I, I really kind of liked it vulnerability is is preached by our dearest friend brian he's like it's his main mantra you know be vulnerable and through vulnerability change the world by Allowing others to harm yourself, you improve the world. Uh, it's not my intention to be vulnerable, but that's kind of somewhere there. And again, even in, in the path to Reiki, I, to learn Reiki, I had to suffer, right? <laughs> right. Um, I, can, I can relate with that. Right. But, uh, you know, another message I got, actually, it, it's, it's everywhere, but it was talking to my beloved John Lennon, he said, you know, be yourself. For him, he was an icon, uh, an idol, and whatever he was on, on, in the minds of billions of people, billions, wasn't him. He was so different in the public view and in, in his own mind, right? So for him, self-discovery to discover who you really are after you cater to to the tastes of and to the needs of Beatles, to the needs of the image of the Beatles. Discovering who you really are was absolutely essential. And he preached like, you know, value that in yourself, that you can be yourself. You because as soon as you become a public figure, you have to squeeze in what people want from you, you know, to keep keep up with popularity. <laughs> Or you have to drop the popularity, right? Many, you know, all of the Beatles, they, they drop their popularity to really discover themselves, right? Um, so yeah, um, being vulnerable and at the same time, you know, being yourself is is the trick. And all we, all we discuss is a huge part of Reiki and energy healing, right? It's all interconnected. It's it's it is there. Um, yes, yes. Welcome. Anya, can you speak? 
Unmute you. Hey, hey Anya. Hello. 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 Right. Hey. Hello. So we do self introductions, and uh, can you in three minutes basically say, I know you want to take half an hour, but uh, shortly say what brought you to Reiki and what's your interest, what's your experience with Reiki and energy healing, and what. Well, I don't have experience. I guess uh, what I was in it, um, I did experience when I was starting to do meditation and... Can you come, go speak closer to the microphone? Can you hear me? We can hear you, but barely. Can you speak a little closer to the microphone? I'm trying. Um, okay. I don't, maybe you can introduce somebody else. I'm going to try to find my headphones. All right, wonderful. <laughs> do that. All right. Um, Max? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Joanna can speak. It's Joanna. Yes. Yes. You can really speak. Can you also show your face. <laughs> Yay. I, I didn't know you can speak. <laughs> yes. You, you sp well, you I don't speak uh, English very well. Ah, I see. All right. My microphone seems to be changed here. Who is speaking? Right. Oh, that's TC. TC, we can hear, hear you fine. Yeah, finally the microphone worked, but the camera is still nothing. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> all right, let's do with Joanna first, and then you, 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 you will speak, okay? All right. Thank you. Welcome with the uh, voice. So, hi, Joanna. Can you talk about your, uh, how, what, what brought you here, what energy experience, healing experience? Well, uh, I was brought up with uh, two different parents. Uh, my father was an engineer, very mental and very strict. And uh, my mother was a very spiritual person, very free. But uh, I don't know why, but I followed the, the footsteps of my father. And um, uh, I also studied engineering. I, I was a very mental person, uh, uh, but my mother always tried to guide me uh, to a different path. Uh, but uh, I, I came to know Reiki about uh, 20, 20 years ago uh, for the first time. Uh, I went to a Reiki class. I was a teenager. Uh, I felt the energy and it was uh, very surprising for me because I didn't believe anything. Uh, I think it was a really nice experience, but I, I still didn't follow that path. And about, uh, I don't know, maybe one year, uh, one year or half, one year and a half ago, uh, my life started changing completely. And and I started sensing, uh, sensing that something was uh, happening more than the life that I was living. I, I had a perfect life. I, I had a big company, a big house, uh, a loving uh, husband, everything. But something, I thought that something was missing or there was mo more than I was living. And... Um, I came to know Reconnection uh, from Eric, I think it's Eric, Dr. Eric Pearl. Yes. And I did uh, uh, Reconnection with a friend. And uh, on the first session, uh, I started doing sign language with my hands. Uh, and I didn't understand what I was doing. Um, and I, uh, for a few months, I, uh, I was doing regularly, but during meditation, but I didn't understand what, what it was. And uh, this year, I went to a Stargate event. I don't know if you know. Um, and they, uh, they told me um, it was um, light language. I was doing light language at that one day. It would be clear for me what I was doing and uh, on that uh, same day 
I went on the internet and started looking for light language and I came across your site and uh, Wendy, uh, she was doing the light language and that's how I, I knew you. And uh, since then I've been attending your hangouts and I have a session next week with the team and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Yes, absolutely. You have wonderful um, energy. And thank you for your energy you're sending us. Your, your support is, we feel on this side, we feel that support. When you join us, you'll join us. Thank often. you. It, it's really nice. And um, recognize um, a hybrid in you. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Your, your energies are uh, just and, uh, this, your, oh go ahead you have a lot this, of uh, oh go ahead <laughs> these few weeks when uh, I started attending your um, hangouts uh, I started feeling more and more energy and I'm doing many things uh, with my hands even creating energy balls, even when the team was talking, I started creating this giant energy ball. And uh, it's very interesting. And I just feel this amazing love and peaceful. It's really, really nice. Excellent. Don't yes. You have a lot of connections to a lot of places. And now you're starting to uh, wake up to your actual path for this life. So it's a beautiful thing. Do you want I to share know. which country you're from? To speaking from? Well, I, yes, I am from Portugal, in the north of Portugal. And, uh, but I live uh, in a farm in the interior. Uh, my internet is not very good here, but I hope <laughs> you all can hear me. But now it's perfect. Perfect. Nice. Very cool. Um, TC, do you want to go next? Let's try. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it's actually the first time I will have to uh, talk about it or tell anyone about it, how it started. So I think, um, I think I can start by trying to explain where I am right now um, because the channeling part was always uh, much stronger, more present. I had, uh, we have a history in the family, uh, but I never thought that I would be part of it or that it would happen to me as well. Um, so uh, basically I was being guided in such a clear way that I couldn't ignore that there was guidance and there was something else. Um, I was always very sensitive to energies and emotions and other people and surroundings. And so it was a gradual process into it. And about a year ago, a year and a half, it, it was, it was like a wave, it was overwhelming, and I didn't know what was happening for sure. Um, and that's when I started looking into it and what energy meant and what effect, uh, how I was, I, I would say helping people in a way that I didn't know I was. And then family and close friends sort of helped me and, and pointed out and that's when I started looking for information and getting in touch with other people doing the same. And, but it's still very, 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 um, it, it's very much by the moment. I don't know where it, where, where I'm going necessarily before I started, I start doing it. Um, but there was a moment that I met some other people doing Reiki and doing healing. And, and there was sort of a call, there was a bond. Uh, I, I was, 
it's like my whole attention and uh, I was supposed to go that way. And after I started hanging out with them, so to speak, um, I had sort of memories coming back to me. And then I remember um, contacts, interactions from uh, when I was about three, three, maybe four, maybe earlier than that. Um, and then the pieces started to uh, come together, like everything makes a little more sense, but I'm still sort of um, looking for answers, trying to figure out which way I should go. So it is a little um, difficult to me when people ask about it, like uh, what is that you are doing? How, how did it start? And I don't really know um, where the starting point is or what I, I could explain about it <laughs> exactly. That's cool. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, we have uh, so many advanced. Um, yeah, there was. Um, I I know there's an extraterrestrial presence that it's really strong. That it was sort of um, frightening at first. Um, but the more I learn about it, it becomes more of a friendship than <laughs> a frightening thing. Of course, yes. Um, so, yeah, I'm still, I'm still trying to understand how it all comes together, you know, the big picture. So it, it's, um, it's a journey. <laughs> um, sometimes we, we meet people who are, had similar journey. They were afraid, they were scared, that they felt threatened. And after they faced the alien, they discovered it was higher self. <laughs> exactly. Could, could, could be scary. <laughs> uh, but even on that journey, you have tons of free will choices, right? Um, it is a game. It's an illusion. Even higher self is an illusion, but uh, higher self is much more robust illusion and then material world is secondary to it so so initial initial truth is the creator the peace the silence then this creator created an illusion of all the complexity of the spirit world and then that complexity of the spirit world created the material world so we are more illusionary than the spirit the spirit is primary um and Reiki is an interface between our material illusion and spiritual illusion. <laughs> so why I'm saying it, it's like directly connected to what you have choices. You create your story. You even create your story with your higher self, right? So you, you can choose your higher self. You, it, it, it's that flexible, that fluid, but then, if you choose it wrong, it's, it doesn't resonate well. If you choose it right, it, it's really bold and, and then it strength, strengthens. And the proofs of that being real spread into the future and into the past. So your past, you create your past from, from, from now, right? As you roll into the timeline, you, you use free will to create your wonderful past and to create your story. So. So understand you're not a victim and not even a, a discoverer, not even an explorer, you're a creator of that story. Hope it helps. Um, you have, um, I need to speak and I think that's, that would be every, everybody, right? Anya, can you speak? I will unmute you if I can. Yeah. Hey, unmute, oh, sorry, unmute, yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Sorry, it's morning. I don't know if you can see me as you well. Can see you wonderfully, thank you. Thank you. So, um, since I was actually young, I was born in Poland, and of course, I was 17 when I left the United States. But a lot happened in my life, and um, I was burned a couple of times. Actually, it was very strange because I got burned on my legs and my hand and my chest, and one arm wasn't burned. And then um, this was very difficult for me but when I was in a hospital even when I had wounds I used to go to other kids and I was singing to them or being around them and I kind of even though I was in pain 
um, it was very strange because even the doctors used to say, and I'm not trying to, you know, simulate anything, but I always felt like I don't even belong here. Like, you know, the whole world and family, I always say my human mom and my human dad and everybody was thinking I'm losing my mind. But this is how I felt since I was little. When I grew up, it was a little bit different. When I was at school, when I was, I believe, in my fourth grade, the only arm that I didn't get burned got burned out of 100 kids who were running at the recess. And the cafeteria lady worked with hot water, and she, by accident, just popped into me out of the corner. And everybody was shocked, even my family's like, how is this possible? When I was 32, I had very simple surgery. I had internal bleeding, and I was about three weeks intensive care in Mayo Clinic. So something is always happening drastic, and I am healing, like, really quick, to be honest with you. Like, I was... Um, and the crib tied up because I had wounds all over my body. And there was another boy who passed away next to me. And they said, that I remember doctors used to talk, you know, in the hospitals like that open, not like here, United States, you know, hush, hush. And they were telling my parents probably I will not survive. But see, the thing is, I kept on healing pretty good. And I never really, you know, it's like you have this feeling, you know, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Everything's going to be fine. And seeing so many people in a hospital, to me, it was actually a great experience. People say, oh my gosh, you have been through so much. Actually, you know what? I take it as an experience. And I have learned so much. And I've met so many wonderful people that I think it's you know, a blessing, which people will think that's crazy. It's not. Actually, it's not. No one will understand this from my point of view. I think it was a blessing that I got burned. And actually, right now, my best friends, best people... Yeah, some people have been mean to me because of the scars and stuff, but I've met the best people in the world who are my best friends and, and people who are compassionate and loving and nice, the true, really pure souls. Uh, when it comes to, sorry, my dog are walking all over. When it uh, comes to Reiki, to answer your question really quick, um, I never really had much experience with Reiki, but I felt really warm coming from my hands, and this happened a lot of times, and sometimes I even tell some people I have to put my hands under the water because it's so warm right here from this area, I know what you're and doing. you know, anyway, um, I am with you club for about a year now, and I want to introduce myself to you guys, I have, I am here because I'm being guided, I'm getting a lot of messages recently, I wrote to Max, I am changing a little bit, few things in my life, and I can see a great, it's like, when it's starting to come, it's coming. And I am being guided being here. And I'm here because I want to learn. And I have to progress. And I guess that's my journey. So thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Anya, I have a small message from you for you. Thank you. you. They were telling me that while you were talking, that the pain that you experienced in this life was keeping you in the third dimension because you are from a higher dimensional thought process, and you know this. Yes, you know, I feel You know that you are always bringing in higher thought processes and feel the energies from higher dimensions. And so they had to put some pain in your life to keep you in the third dimension so that you would, not, would be valuable to the earth. This is the time when your value is, is important from this time on, you will have to no longer have to experience that kind of pain because they have kept you here and now is your time to work in the third dimension for a higher cause. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. That uh, verifies a lot. Thank you. Oh. Jim, Jim, can you look into angelic connection of Anya? Pardon me? Can you look into angelic connection of Anya? Oh, okay. There is definitely one, um, but it's some of it's alien connection, some of it's um, uh, angelic, some of it is alien. But they've kept her in the third dimension for this, the, because they wanted her to remain vital, and now she has reached a point where she can discover all the things that. Uh, are meant to be for her. She already knows that they're there. She just has to, she has to understand now that this is the time to bring them out. And also, um, 
the fact that the pain was through the burns, I think it is it it is a transformation of Polish Polish culture. It's it it is Polish culture being transformed. So when you burn things, it's a release of certain things. It is also when you burn things. Um, the things that are not necessary are burned away, and the and the things that are necessary stay because they cannot be burned away. That makes a lot of sense, guys. Um, actually, this is some kind of a relief, you know. It's like for years I had a wandering and I felt so much, and now I feel like, like you said, like I'm at the point right now that a lot of things make sense. Finally, I feel more free. Let's put it this way. I felt like I was in the shell and I could not get out. But thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, yes, you. this is your time. This is the beginning of a forward motion that can't be stopped for you. I'm just doing what I'm feeling and I'm being guided. I know I am, I asked for that and I said, I'm ready, let's do it. And I'm just following that now. Yes. Um, okay. We'll do a break in a few minutes. I just wanted to comment on um, that story and on what was happening. Basically, the story is tragic, if you, if you can see. <laughs> it's, it is tragic. Oh, it's tragic. And it is one of the main principles of Reiki. Uplift the energy. Uplift the perception. Uplift the interpretation. Uplift the mood. Uh, raise up. Um, ascend, transcend into the spiritual meaning. Take a bigger perspective. Take the spiritual perspective. Jim, do you want to add? Actually, they're telling me something else about someone else right now. That's fine. Mm. Yes, I, and it I, was about Justin. I... How did you know it was about you, Justin? Your name oh. in a past life was Sunjit, which is, strangely enough, an anagram of your name. It is. And they're just, they were just telling me about that, just that and it's from Egyptian culture. Really? Much more than that, except that they just told me that. Hmm. Thank you very much. I just wanted to thank everybody for sharing. I really enjoyed everybody's stories are very beautiful. Thank you very much for sharing. And Max, you keep giving me butterflies and you're projecting there, buddy. Yes, good. Excellent. It's uh, the spirit. I, I'm just a, yeah, the second principle of Reiki. You're just a channel, right? You just Th thank you very pipe much. Pipe it through, right? You know, keep thank pumping. You. <laughs> I just pump it. Yeah, become a clearer channel. Work on your, on uh, clearing your pipe. <laughs> Brush your pipe, <laughs> clear it, make it um, clean, and um, the, the gears which pump like. Psh, <laughs> uh, lubricate the gear. That, that's uh, uh, the second principle. You, you have to be a clear channel, and it, it takes work to channel, right? You, you do we, we have, subscribe to channel the work. To Max, channel. we have a very special group here this time. All the people that are present are very special. Absolutely. Uh, the absolutely. I'm getting like special, uh, and uh, uh, every time it is like. You know, sometimes I don't ask for introductions until later, but then later people share. I was brought here by this series of events, and it's always a miracle how how uh, some people. One of the people, one of the students said, "I was driving elsewhere. I was driving elsewhere. My car brought me here." <laughs> 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 right. Okay. I think it's a good time to make um, and thanks, Jason, for for the feedback. Um, Let's make a break for 13 minutes. That's how much we need. So okay. 70 plus 13. It makes a, Thank you. a half hour. So it would be 9.30 for me. It would be whatever, 12.30 for Jim. See, see you then. Uh, what? I will pause the recording, actually. Okay. Um, Reiki levels. Yeah, prepare your questions. I will talk about Reiki levels, and then I'll ask for questions. Um, Reiki levels are one, two, three, and four. Sometimes it is just one, two, three, uh, uh, Reiki one, Reiki two, and master, but in our tradition, master is divided into two parts. So one is 
is sufficient to do the healing. It's, you know, all you need to do the healing. Two is uh, sufficient to charge the money. So basically two is more like training you to, um, Reiki two is training you to have a Reiki practice, which is, uh, has tons of business-like aspects and also how do you, how do you um, stay, how do you relate to medical profession, right? It's, you know, Reiki is, is healing and medic, medicine is treatment. Medical, you know, you are not offering medical treatment, we are offering uh, an energy healing, which is alternative medicine, spiritual, traditional, spiritual and traditional. Basically, we are working through miracles and miracles, luckily in Western in Western society, miracles are permitted, and it goes closer to religious practice than to medical practice. And so basically we are relying on the freedom of religion more than on, um, on medicine, right? Uh, so how do you run a medical pra uh, Reiki practice, not medical, Reiki practice, and how do you, uh, you know, charge money for it? So with Reiki one, you can accept donations after you get, eight hours of Reiki one training this time and next B time, one B, you can accept donations, but basically you're not supposed to, you're not trained to run a, med, uh, a practice and charge money for your treatments, but you can accept donations. And basically you do it on self, friends, family, animals, trees, plants, lakes, ocean, earth, events. But um, basically, you're not running medical. Uh, you're not running Reiki practice. Reiki three is called Reiki master. Basically, you get in Reiki one, you don't get any symbols. In Reiki two, you get uh, a symbol, and in Reiki three, you get a few more symbols, and you can st start using the symbols. And then uh, in Reiki three, basically, you learn all the art, all the art of healing to the extent and because you already practiced a lot that that would be like one to two will be an upgrade two to three will be an upgrade so at level three you you get everything and level four is the training how to teach others and initiation how to teach others and it sounds very structured and complex but actually it is not it is the simplest the simplest way to uh to get to become an energy healer there is tons of other traditions which require lifelong discipleship student teacher relationship being into the school like massage therapy takes hundreds of hours required for for the for the of training to to become a therapist for break it's eight hours one uh, eight hours, two, eight hours, three, and you're already Reiki master. So it's, it's only 24 hours of training and you are fully uh, certified. You can't get any higher. In um, Reiki, there are other, other um, decorations which make you a little stronger. Like, you know, you can take lessons from teachers who are closer to the founder of Reiki. And because my teacher is Barbara Carlton, she is the sixth, sixth in, in, in a ladder of, in the chain of teacher-student relationships. So I get seven, seven of, um, in my teacher lineage, I have, I'm connected to the founder of Reiki, Mikao Usui, through seven steps. Right. So you will be in eight steps. And, um, um, you, you put it in your certificate and then you, you kind of connect. And it's, it's real, absolutely real. It is more real than, than physical reality, right? It is um, practical. We had Mikao channeled and he came to us and it was, he gave us initiation show. So in spiritual terms, we are directly were initiated by Mikao Usui. So that would be <laughs> skipping all the steps wonderfully. Um, 
you don't have to rush. One is sufficient to do all, all, all everything except charging money, right? And um, to teach, you have to get like all four of them. I think that that's that's about short essence of levels of Reiki, and um, it's worth it. It's simple, cheap, fast. And why is it why mm. is it so simple? Um, because you don't really have to know much to be connected. It is basically you volunteer to become a channel of the spirit, and then you trust the spirit to do the rest. So basically, uh, it is that simple. We, the initiation in the, in, in the Reiki is you invite the initiation, we channel the initiation, and then basically that is an agreement. You agree to channel Reiki energy, and that's it. So that's why it is so simple, because most of the training and knowledge comes through that connection to the spirit, so you don't really uh, have to receive a lot of logical training in the in the class and in the class you get basically how do you relate to it and uh, and reiki is so simple it's 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 utterly simplified energy healing you place the hands and trust the spirit to do the work basically it's much simpler than surgery much simpler for surgery you have to study for about Many, 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 like you become a certified surgeon around 32 years of age, if, if you do everything as quick as possible. <laughs> so 24 hours versus, versus 32 years, it's, it's very different. Any questions now? I invite any topics, any questions. <laughs> Unless, Jim, you want to add anything on that? Um, I just wanted to, I know that some people ask me every now and then, what is Reiki energy and where does it come from? Huh? And Reiki energy is, comes from the earth, from the sky, from within you, from your client. It comes from actually everywhere. We've been living in a electromagnetic field for centuries and centuries as human beings, as we develop. You see, the electromagnetic field is just natural to the earth. And so we are part of an energy field anyway, but that's not necessarily what Reiki energy is. That's just part of it. But Reiki energy is energy from the earth, energy from the universe, from God, from anyone that you call to help. Reiki energy is part of who you are as well. Your energy is part of that energy. And it's all going in to mix with the energy of the client and if they realize that they are getting all this energy from different places and that it's mixing with their energy to help them heal, they'll have a better understanding of how much power there is uh, in their healing. If they believe that this energy is a healing energy, then it, uh, it becomes a greater healing energy. Some people are skeptical about Reiki energy because, oh, it's just energy. What can it do? You know, they see what energy can do, but they're not sure that humans can pass energy through their hands or foreheads or eyes or anything to, enough to help anyone heal. So what you need to tell your client is that your energy and all the energies around and that all the energies you use are going to come through your hands and blend with their energies to help them heal. Now, have them think about those places that need healing. If they have uh, aching shoulders, backs, or knees, have them think about bringing that energy to those places because you're also going to be going to those places because that's where they told you hurts. But they're also going to be part of the healing in the sense that they're aware and they believe that this energy is going to be very helpful and beautiful. So make sure that they are part of your healing. I know the first thing that Reiki does is relax a person, brings them into a state where healing is more possible. Just think about that because what happens when you're sick? 
you need lots of rest, right? Lots and lots of sleep and rest. So this brings you to that state of rest and relaxation so that healing can actually be better, can happen easier, and they can be part of it in a better way. So the first, first, very first thing Reiki does is make you relaxed so that you can accept all the things that Reiki has for you. So uh, keep that in mind. And the Reiki energy comes from so many places, spirit, Mother Earth, the universe. Is there any questions about that? Good. Because I'm sure there are questions. Hello, everybody. Please participate. We need your, your participation. It's hard to speak in a silence. Yes. Yeah. Voice up your questions. I can unmute everybody. Hold on. I'll click the button. Unmute all. <laughs> uh, all, un all unmuted. So do you meditate before? You start Reiki? I would, yes. I think preparing for Reiki is a wonderful thing. A lot of people do not really prepare themselves to give a healing. But if you're not prepared in your own mind, body, and spirit, how are you going to give a good Reiki healing? My thought is that you check in with your spirit guides and everything, and also check in with your own energy field. Because if you're not feeling well, if you're feeling unbalanced or whatever it is, you can bring together the circuits in your hands. You can do it this way and bring it out and feel the energies coming out of your hands. Or you can connect your fingers to help uh, connect the energy field of your body so that it moves a little better. Because if you're more prepared and also with meditation, of course, that's going to help. And also prepare your patient by letting them know what you, who you are, what you're doing. If you can touch, put them as much as at ease as possible. Prop up under their knees. You can put a blanket on them. Make sure they're not too hot or too cold if they need water. Whatever it is that makes your client or customer, or I, I don't like the word customer really. It sounds too commercial, but your patient or your client feel the most relaxed and comfortable. Of course, a little chit chat, finding out about each other is nice, but the most comfort that you can bring to them, the better. Because uh, if they're uncomfortable during your healing, healing session, they're not going to be in a place where the greatest amount of healing can occur. Please be aware of how you're patient, client, whatever, is feeling because they must be relaxed. If they're too cold or too hot or feel nervous, um, try to put them as much as at ease as possible. Cover them with a blanket, prop up their knees. Whatever it is that they need, get, let them have that. I'll unmute all, everybody again. Uh, go ahead. What? what? I just unmuted um, everybody. Please uh, come up with more questions. James, uh, how, how important is the tone of voice of the person doing the Reiki? If there's somebody that you don't know at all, the tone of voice is very, very important because they want you to be someone of confidence. If you seem like very unconfident or shaky or not sure what you're doing, that's going to cause them to be uncomfortable. So be relaxed, be confident, let them know what you're doing. Use a softer voice because this is, you're not going to use an outdoor voice for this kind of thing, but make them feel as comfortable that you care about what happens to them. And I know that sincerely everyone cares about their patient, their client. So let that come through in your voice. Let them, let them hear your concerns. Let them hear that you are caring about them and say, oh, is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable? A blanket, a sheet, blah, 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 blah. All these things beforehand so that they know that you are putting them in the most, uh, the best place possible for their healing. And yes, the tone of voice is important. Now, if you know somebody very well that is coming for a, a healing, your, your voice is also important. 
you may not have to be as quiet and comforting because they may already have confidence in your abilities and things and know who you are and what's going to happen, but still be very friendly, be very light, be very confident, and, and also offer them all the things that you would offer anyone to be as relaxed as possible. Find out where their aches and pains are. You know, um, I think that being yourself along with being um, helpful to their relaxation is very important. Everyone should feel relaxed. Unmute everybody again, please, with your questions. I have another question if no one is asking. Um, I have a question, Jim. Did you ever notice that while you're doing healing, you start to speak other languages? It's because my dog have been attacked by javelina, which is wild dogs, wild pigs, I'm sorry, and he almost lost his leg. And when I was doing it, I felt my body start, it wasn't shaking, it was like moving. And out of nowhere, I start to speak completely other language, which, you know, it wasn't our language here. Right, yeah. And I could feel everything was coming through. Thank you. Exactly. All right, let me, let me uh, tell you about that. With some people that are open to that kind of communication, they're open to that, the other spirits coming in. And I have clients that I actually channel and do Reiki with at the same time. But you must know your client, your patient. If they are not open to that kind of thing, you should not allow it to come through. This would only frighten them and confuse them. If you have a patient or a client that is open to these things, by all means, let this communication come through and let it communicate with them and heal them sometimes. Many times, these languages are speaking remedies and healings into the person into the animals and into the situations, sometimes into the whole room. So yes, if you have someone that is accepting of all sorts of healing, all kinds of healing, and, and is grateful for that kind of thing, by all means. Be wary if you do not know someone that if these things start to come through, you must ask permission of your client or patient if that is something that they want to allow. Because otherwise you might frighten them or make them uncomfortable or ruin your actual healing with them because they're not aware of what you're doing. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it happened to me as well. I, um, somebody seemed to me quite advanced and I started doing... And she became scary. Like, I did shamanic chants, I, and you know, she just said, "Oh no, I'm too scared. I'm too scared. Like, let let's stop." So you know, you really have to like get a feedback before before going that far. Yes, be careful. Don't let just anybody come through when you're with somebody that you're not sure what their belief system can handle. Is there any other questions about that, or anything else? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Does every, everyone feels the energy or uh, the healing al always happens even though the person is resistant to it? Okay, there are people that are resistant to it because they're not sure what they're supposed to feel. They're not sure if they're supposed to feel anything at all. So be, with someone new that you know is not sure of what's going on, you may inform them this is what you might feel. You might feel a little energy coming into your body, some tingling maybe, a little pulsing, but nothing painful. So just relax, it's not going to hurt. If you feel these things, it's wonderful. It's just to show you that the energy is coming in. And on the other hand, you may not feel a thing, at least right now. Your body is not attuned to this kind of healing, and perhaps it will take a few times uh, that before you start feeling the energy coming into your body. Now, to prepare them in this way is fine. They, the, the very fact that if they don't feel anything, that does not mean 
they are not getting a healing. You can let them know this. You can say, you don't have to feel anything to get a healing. The energy can be very soft. The energy can be very subtle. But these energies, without question, are working. So just let them know that. And, I, and some of them will say to you afterwards, I don't feel any differently. I didn't feel any energy, and now I don't feel any differently. But tell them this. Give it a few hours. Let it soak in. Let the energy do its work, because sometimes it does not immediately feel better. But after a few hours, I had my best friend, I, I reiki his feet. After I was done raking his feet and his body, he said, I feel no different. And I said, that's all right. My energy takes a little while for it to work. My energy will come, uh, will continue to work for days if, if it has to. Three hours later, I get a telephone call. What did you do? My feet don't hurt any longer. I am, they feel perfectly fine. And I said, I told you. The energy takes a while sometimes to get through to the places it needs to get through. It sort of has to fight its way through because your body, you know, when you're first doing this with some people, it's not accepting it totally, but it will continue to work. Mm -hmm. Energy will get through because your intention is to heal. Your intention is to make it better. Your energy is there to, to make this person feel a, a greater uh, peace and understanding of what Reiki is and to feel better and healed. So do not be discouraged. And in fact, there are some people that will not feel the energy the first time and it's due to their belief systems and they may not come back saying, oh, that's just not for me. Well, you know what? At that time, in that place, in this part of the universe, that may not be for them. But you will be able to help those that want to be helped. And they believe they can be. Yeah, most of the people actually don't feel uh, the flow of energy. I, I, so I'm setting up the expectations. Usually, I don't ask them, do you feel? Because in most cases, they don't. And uh, you know they might be afraid to say that they don't, but really, uh, when you feel that the energy flows, it doesn't mean that they feel it. Um, right. First, what they report is like the heat from the hands, which is, yeah, it just warms, which is not the Reiki energy. Reiki energy is, is uh, non-physical, not measurable by physical devices. It's not electromagnetic that can be measured by physical well, devices i have to disagree with that a little bit yes. because mm -hmm. i i can there are certain heats that get that i give out that are so intense they are part of my reiki healing and people will say that it is part they feel the healing coming through the heat that is uh, something they can feel and probably you can measure yeah. but okay. some of the other things that happen may not be some of the but i have I can feel about eight or nine different kinds of energy when I'm doing healing. Now, they may not be able to feel it at all. The heat is the one that m most people will feel, and some of that is just regular hand heat. But there is an intense heat that comes at some point that is a very deep healing, and they will, will recognize that it's not the normal hand heat. So, I do have to sort of disagree with you there. there I mean, are, yeah, yeah. Certain percent uh, of that, yes. Like one tenth or twelve percent would be measurable. But yes, ninety around ninety percent is something which you know is not really correct. Specific. I will agree with that. So, um, if you uh, so, so, excuse me, if you yes. use the uh, infrared camera. Right. I, I played with infrared cameras and other cameras. There is very little you can do to register on camera. I, yeah, I did, I did quite a lot of measurements. It's, um, it's possible to create some effect, but that wouldn't be a typical Reiki healing effect. It would be something else which you can induce. 
and usually induce it in a, a living system into a living system can induce something which is measurable, but it's not the energy directly. Yeah, I, I played with infrared cameras, okay. like seven cameras we should try then. Yeah, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't talking about uh, actually seeing the energy come from uh -huh. Uh -huh. the hand, but the, thermal the, the heat generated, you can see the difference. Of course, of course. Several, several degrees difference. Of yes. course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. the heat is measurable. Yeah. Even electric charges are measurable, but uh, it's, it's secondary to, to the spiritual. In any case, uh, what do you tell their typical client? Uh, you say that uh, you work with the spirit. Um, it's it's really difficult to explain or or the energy. So when you say energy, you mean healing energy, right? I work with healing energy. Uh, I, recently, I have been to the hospital, and many nurses asked what it is. And apparently, in hospitals nowadays, it's a common common place to do Reiki, and they say we call it healing touch. So that would be the the modern mainstream word for Reiki, it would be healing touch. But basically you say that you do healing touch, they might feel some heat, they might feel some buzz and electric buzz, like sound buzz and electric buzz. But basically your first and main goal is to uplift their spirit bring them into the elevated spiritual state, happy state, healing state. And this state is feels like relaxed and sleep. So that's why Jim so talk, talk so much about relaxation. So it feels relaxed. And it feels so relaxed, you feel paralyzed because you can't really move. And it is good. You, you, you should say that don't be afraid to be partly paralyzed. It's, it's temporary. And welcome that state. It is more utter relaxation state. that's what you do in your sleep you relax you heal and that would be a very special short nap and if you go and and actually nap it would be very healing and if, if you snore it will be also healing don't be afraid to snore and often it works great uh, but if somebody seems like they they sleep i sleep and if it's a new person uh, don't assume that they sleep. Most cases, people, many people, especially mainly uh, neurotic people, they, they seem to be asleep, but they're thinking very, very intensely at that time. And they are aware of everything that happens around. So if you then ask like, you know, are you asleep? They immediately answer to you something. So, so they're not always there, but if they can get out there in the, in the others, in the dream state, that would, that would be very healing. You say that you that you can say that Reiki is an assisted meditation. They would understand. So basically, you you help them to get into self-healing state. You send them certain vibration. They understand the word vibration, and invite them to meet you halfway. So to suck in that vibration and bring them bring themselves up to that vibration. So you give them the tuning, and they have to meet it if they want to. Sometimes I put my hands on the person and I feel no flow whatsoever. It's like blockage. And sometimes you work a little bit and you try here and there. Some people are blocked on the head and they're open on the feet. Some people are blocked on the heart, but they're open elsewhere. So you try different locations. But if nothing works, I usually say, I tell a story about Jim. And the story goes like that. Uh, Jim and I went to a guided meditation. And as usual, I was suspicious of everything. Actually, I invited him, but I was suspicious of everything. So I was looking around, are people really meditating? Is the person who guided the meditation really do, know, knows what they're doing? Are they really spiritual? So at the end, I barely, barely meditated. I was mostly aware of the things around. And Jim had a, a, prof, a most profound spiritual experience. So who got benefited from being suspicious, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, you, you came here, you spend your time. If you want the healing, please accept it. Right now, I feel that you're blocked. If you want to be healed, please unblock yourself. 
And that usually is sufficient. In most cases, it, that works. <laughs> but, you know, I explained that um, you can trust me, my intentions are pure. If you go outside in the world, go, go ahead and block yourself again. You might be in, in uh, unfriendly, hold on, I will mute. You might be in an unfriendly environment, so you have to put blockages and shields. But here, accept the healing, you have to unblock yourself, at least partially. So to let me go through and, and send it. Another experience was that often I meet people and the more, the, the more, the time even more, the, who are so much higher in spiritual vibration than I, that it's hard for me to push my energy that high. So typical Reiki, my Reiki energy is my favorite color, teal, 4.7 level between fourth chakra and fifth chakra, right here, right? So that's my comfort level. That's where I do my healing. And when I do gym, he's like, way higher way higher so i asked them could you come little down so i can give you reiki right <laughs> and they do actually they do um they do uh because even even if i am not as spiritually advanced i still my intention my energy my impulse my love friendship all of that is is serving them as well many of you almost every one of you, you come from higher to lower. So when we do Reiki to mainstream people, we have to raise them up. When we do Reiki to you guys, we have to ground you, we connect you down to lower vibrations, right? Mm -hmm. um, the per and uh, there are multiple purposes of doing healing. It's, it's, it's multifaceted things, but um, I invite comments at that point. I will unmute everybody, please comment. And Jimmy, if you want to comment, you are welcome to. Questions, comments? If there's any questions, go ahead and ask. I'm sure that there's something on your mind. It's funny that you say that your healing comes between your two chakras. I have a, a birthmark about two fingers beneath my clavicle. And it kind of looks like, a, like somebody pinched me. And my mother always called it the, a pinch of God as my, my birthmark. And I, I feel a lot of energy that comes from there. It's sort of funny that, uh, that you say that that's where you heal from. I have a focal point, an actual physical focal point there on my body. It's called higher, higher heart. Yes. Higher heart. Yeah. I guess it would be a nice uh, point where I could introduce chakras. So the idea of chakras is fundamental to Reiki and fundamental to energy healing. It is shared by many other teachings like yoga, which is uh, very similar to Reiki. Yoga is basically um, self-healing. So with Reiki, you do healing others. With yoga, you do self-healing. But it is the same energy, same energy flow. Um, the word Reiki comes from Rei, which is light or ray of light, and Ki, which is healing energy. Ki and Chi is the same thing, it's just different pronunciations. Chi would be like Chinese, Ki would be like more Japanese. Right? So, uh, in Japan, Reiki means any healing work. So, uh, what we are teaching is actually called the uh, Usui Reiki. Usui is the last name of Mikao Usui, the founder of Reiki. So, chakras. Um, chakras is something very artificial and something very fundamental. We have seven chakras, and I believe... These were created by galactic creators who created humans before Earth. Even it's 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 a number seven is a number for humans, but I think it came from outside of Earth. And uh, the human is built around this geometric seven number seven. So this seven is wonderful because it has a 
a center. Oh, it's nine. Hold on. How do this? Like, like that. It has a center. The heart is the center. You have three chakras above heart, three chakras below heart. So heart is the center. It's a, the main entrance for the spiritual energy. Um, there, each chakra is characterized by the frequency. And the frequency is defined by the distance from the brain to each chakra. So the longest would be the distance to the lower chakra between the legs. Chakra number one, where the sexual organs are, and um, the first chakra goes aims down, so it's from the spine down to earth. Um, so that's the longest distance to, from the brain and the slowest of the vibrations, like like really really slow, like brrr, even slower maybe, like boom 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 like that. Uh, sometimes you can hear a chakra activated. So the sound which comes to you could be like, like inside, from inside of you. You can close the ears, it would still hear. It could be a chakra being active, like releasing the sound. And some, some chakras seen at different tones. Uh, and the shortest would be, I guess, the, the third eye chakra. It would be like right here. Even higher would be higher chakras. Like the, the, the crown chakra go, goes straight up. And there are other non counted chakras above it. And as you as you develop spiritually, they get activated. Um, to activate your chakras and clear up the chakras, <laughs> you do meditations and you do self healing, but it's also very helpful to, to be upgraded by others. So when I work on light workers, if the person comes with pain, I do healing if the person comes healthy i do upgrades right if the per it's nice some people are especially young people but even in, in, at any age some people just don't need any healing they need upgrades they come for upgrades and removing of the blockages so i i work my specialty is is higher chakras like uh, on the head and above so um then um the energies, uh, the, uh, that's, I guess, the, the main message for my last year of understanding, like in the past half a year, a year, I understood. Um, so people are different in their main activity, main lesson that they go through. The soul comes here to this body to learn certain lessons and a different stages of your life you learn different lessons you focus on different chakra lessons what is chakra chakra is a vortex of energy and a frequency so the the first chakra is the lesson of survival and many people on earth billions of people are now still work through the survival level of lessons and um it's very valid. It's, it is what you're born with that the first chakra mostly active, like the, the baby which comes out, you know, screaming, wanting to eat and um, to breathe. That's first chakra lessons. And then as you grow, as you build your body and as you build your spiritual body, uh, the levels go up. Um, so second chakra is just below the belly button. Um, it's called sacral, sacral chakra, and it corresponds to communication to others, lower levels of communication to others, like nonsense, small talk, chit chat, advertisement, all the nonsense that goes through television. It is humanity learning the lesson of playing with the lessons of second chakra, lower levels of communication. And that corresponds to the profession of salespeople. <laughs> salespeople and um, traders mm -hmm. and other lower level communications like television, mm, 
broadcasters. Hopefully not what we do right now, right? <laughs> All right, uh, third chakra is the warrior's chakra. It is willpower. Solar plexus, just below the rib, where the ribs stop, solar plexus, you can push there and um, it's just below the bones. Um, it's a third chakra corresponding to the, to the energy of sun. It has a color yellow, so it starts red, orange, yellow, right? Yellow sun energy. And it is the chakra of warriors, rulers, managers. So, and it is violence too. Violence and expression of power and also exp expression of victimization. So you can play the same lesson as the one who is violent and the one who is suffers from that violence at the same level of experience. If you perceive, you can perceive it from either side. So, so uh, it's, it's also uh, planning and occupational things in that level too. Planning things for the future and 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 testing the waters for your future before you get to the heart area. It's more intellectually connected to uh, occupation, like kings and rulers and things of you were, you were mentioning, where they see themselves in the world as well. So they sort of, it's, it's sort of the sun sh shining down on them, how bright do they see it? So uh, they're occupational, they're planning, what they want to do with their lives are in this area also. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the violence is huge in humanity, on the television, in movies, in wars, in real life, even in uh, in the office environment. When you, when you are an office worker, there is a lot of hierarchy and power games, right? Just, you know, watch for a few seconds the uh, movie The Office, right? The television series. You can see the power games. It's all... Uh, solar plexus chakra work. So these are lower three chakras. Uh, for you guys who are that advanced, you might feel uncomfortable working with these three chakras, but <laughs> you like to be higher there, up there. I love to be up there. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually they are needed. And you can't really be a good Reiki healer without mastering your lower three chakras. So when, when Jim preaches about grounding. That's what it is implied. You have to live in your lower three chakras too. You don't have, you, you, you know, you have to be like connected to the universe through all seven chakras. Well, I love the lower three chakras. I think that they're fabulous. Um, <laughs> all the fun is down there, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, just in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you come you come to this life to experience physicality and to uplift the physicality, right? So the the past tradition of Earth is about righteous righteousness, virtue, and sin, virtue versus sin. So the new age idea is there is no sin. At least no no the old sin is is not as essential. You do your best and there is the main the main responsibility is for the now, not for the past, right? It's your responsibility to be now, to be good now, right? And the, the new definition of sin is lowering your vibration and lowering the vibration of others. That's the sin. So, higher level lessons are of most interest, most importance in this age, right? So, going, uh, raising your lessons to higher chakras is virtue. And lowering your lessons back to the survival is, is a sin, right? So, so, have your chakras working and then raise up your vibration to learn uh, higher <laughs> lessons. And go ahead, you wanted to, join, to add something? 
No, I'm good. All right. So, so just... the higher level lessons is tr transition through diaphragm. So the first three chakras are below the diaphragm. It's the solar plexus just below the diaphragm. And then raising above the diaphragm is heart, fourth chakra, the central chakra. And it is compassion, love, and trust. And when I work on other people, I discover it, especially males in Russia and other countries with, um, how do you define, with um, uh, more of strict upbringing, strict upbringing have heart chakra blocked. So basically there in Russia, and I noticed that in Mexicans, there is repetitive training of children to mistrust others. You meet a Mexican and they would say immediately something which would, first you will take as real and then you realize they're joking, right? So, so that bre constant breaking of trust is blocking the heart chakra. And when your heart chakra is blocked, you function through all other chakras, through mental, but you don't trust people. You don't connect people on the level of trust. So for rebalancing yourself, for being able to be a healer, you would need to gradually unblock your heart chakra. If you unblock it completely right away, you might get hurt, right? So it is a lesson of gradual opening and just tuning differently your filters. Like at some point I was trained myself to be so trustful that uh, I bought a, uh, I, I forgot the expression, I bought the car which was uh, had a faked Faked uh, title and uh, it was completely broken car. So I wasted three thousand dollars when the, the three thousand were really needed. It was a shame, right? So, um, so the lesson was: you developed your heart connection and trust, but you don't really become impractical, right? So, separating your energetic flow from your judgment. And having judgment not to block your heart chakra, that's the secret. And uh, again, the, 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 the means for that are, as usual, Reiki, self-Reiki, accepting Reiki from others, giving Reiki to others, um, prayer, chant, med and meditation, right? All, all, of that, all of that are important. Um, higher heart, and, and again, it's, it's the main transition, main transition from third chakra to the fourth chakra is the main transition for the humanity. That's what the humanity is doing right now, coming back to heart, coming back from uh, violence and hierarchy to trust and telepathy. That's the key to ascension. Ascension is evolutionary upliftment, upgrade of the of the species where lowest lessons are replaced with uh, higher lessons. Lower activity is replaced with trust, love, and telepathy and empathy, okay? So higher heart is, is a little higher than that. It's basically, again, telepathy, empathy on higher vibrational level. Um, Reiki is coming through heart chakra. It is how the spirit plugs into you uh, through your spine vibration to your um, uh, vertebrae, vertebrae corresponding to the heart. And then it, the, that spirit energy is transmitted through the hands, nerves and bones and meridians to your hands and then to the patient. Okay, uh, professions in life corresponding to higher heart chakra would be, I don't know, Jim, do you know? I'm blanking on that. You are muted, let me unmute yourself, unmute you, hold on. You are muted, okay, go ahead. What did you say? What, I, I professions, what professions would correspond to heart chakra? 
Well, oh, heart chakra? Uh, doctors, nurses, uh, people that want to heal other people and help other people. Um, those people uh, like that help the homeless, work in uh, the, the shelters and places like this. Also, though, there's the higher chakra people that are uh, those of healers, um, uh, energy healers just like you and, and just like um, other people like you. But there are those that, like even psychologists who want to help people mentally can move into a higher chakra understanding of the human brain and able to help people out of difficult situations. And so these are the kinds of people that would be using more of their heart chakra. However, I think now psychologists are trained to use their the third eye more than the heart, but they need to connect the two and they'd be much more successful. But um, there are many occupations that, uh, that are dealing with heart, firemen, policemen even, because they're trying to help society, but it depends on their uh, intention on how they're using their job. Absolutely. But a lot of different jobs, a lot of different jobs can be said to be from the heart, but it depends on the intention of the person. If it's only financial, then it's not a heart chakra job. But if it is from, if it is about helping, nurturing, and helping the world to rise, then it is a heart chakra job. You see, it all depends on the individual and how they see what they are doing and what they want out of it. Ingenious. This time I was like blown uh, away. It was wonderful, Jim. It's uh, it's nice. Uh, nice. You you can um, you, you you did it. Uh, perfect. So so going forward, uh, there is this interesting correspondence. The bottom chakras correspond to a higher chakra. So, uh, heart, heart would correspond to the second. So, two and heart would correspond to one, right? One and heart, and then two and uh, throat, and then three and mind. Okay. Well, in our evolution right now, we're moving from the solar plexus to the heart, just yes. as. Said. We're moving into a more heart, more telepathic, more you, uh, more humane uh, thought processes as a species. So we're coming out of the fighting, the anger, the things that are not necessary to live in to a higher place. And that is our next step in evolution. So you can look at uh, the third chakra as the third dimension. And you can look at the heart chakra as the fourth dimension. Uh huh. Nice. Yes. Uh, so, Quick any question. any activity can be done with um, with heart. Any activity can be done without heart. It would be lower end. It can be done, it can be done with idea of service, compassion, and um, and feeding. Right. Feeding. Uh, that would be from the heart. Somebody wanted to say something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so when you're sensing uh, energy meridians. Okay. Are you asking? It, yeah. When, when you're sensing energy meridians, what chakra should you be focusing through to get the most out of it? Like to, all of them. You should bring that right through all your chakras and let it resonate where it belongs. Okay, so there isn't any one that'll show you the way. It's all of them together that's it, gonna do it. But you, what, what I'm saying is this. There are some energies that will, will resonate with certain chakras. Bring it through all of them and let it resonate where it needs to go. So when you bring it through the chakras, it might stop at the throat or the heart or the head, or it might stop in between a couple of chakras, but that's where it belongs. That's that energy and it can be used best there. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, hi, Christian, welcome. Sorry, I'm late. I was, right. feeding, I was feeding donkeys. Donkeys. <laughs> that's our chakra activity. Um, 
would you like to introduce yourself? What did bring you to the class? What's your interest in, um, in energy healing? I use um, Reiki a lot, a lot of um, absent or um, distance healing, mostly for people. But um, I use Reiki on horses, donkey, uh -huh. dogs, cats. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I, do, I do Reiki on animals as well. I do too. Yeah, I have one regular it. customer every week that's a dog. <laughs> I do. I have a dog and a lady that come together and they both get Reiki. One gets half hour, one gets an hour. Wow. <laughs> which, one gets, which one gets longer? The human. <laughs> Supposedly animals pick up their, um, their companion's uh, illness. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. They pick up or take over. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, and they also pick up the psychological problems of the human as well. Yeah. Okay. My dog barks too much when I leave the van. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> right. That might not be a problem, though. Yeah. Uh, when you want to treat your animal, you might treat yourself. It would be almost as efficient. Each morning. Well, I yeah. try each morning. self Can I, can I uh, ask a question? Sure. Uh, this is relation. Uh, hi, Christine. This is Eileen. Hello. Hi. This is in relation to trust, where you say um, it's important that your client will trust you. And um, what would if a, a client got jittery and you know was uncomfortable while you were attempting to do Reiki? Um, would it be wise to uh, remind the client that his own or her own body will take in only what it needs and what it does not need, it would just leave? That it okay. doesn't have to worry, you know, that there is no harm, that only good will, would happen? Is that a good yeah. thing to remind them? Yes. First of all, if you notice that they're getting uncomfortable, I'd ask what was wrong. Before you go into any explanations, let them express what's causing their discomfort. Or you can say, is there something that, are you uncomfortable? Is there something that I need to do? And let them, if they may say no, and they might, they might not tell you what's wrong. So that's when I would say, you realize Reiki is only positive energy and it cannot hurt you in any way, shape or form. I would leave the explanation as short and sweet and beautiful as possible. Uh, if you start giving a long, in-depth in explanation, that sounds suspicious. Not, not, not that it is, but to people, when somebody starts over-explaining something, it sounds like, oh, I, I do have a need to be uncomfortable. Make it short, sweet, confident and comfortable and let them know there's no way you can get too much energy a reiki is a positive form of energy and it can't harm you in any way shape or form that's it yeah there are many tricks uh, to um to calm the the client uh some people are so neurotic they have to talk and if you if they let, let let them talk they would talk for the whole session and longer right yes we have, we have such clients and you give them the chance to speak out because as they speak you can work on them and as they speak they have some activity so they wouldn't be as jittery i found that it's impossible to work on somebody who is speaking so if you want to have a conversation you don't I didn't pronounce it right. It's not possible to work on the head of something or somebody who is speaking. So the energy stops when they speak. So I would work on some other parts of the body while they were speaking. And then if I need to work on the head, I would ask them <laughs> to yeah. stop speaking for a short while. Um, and uh, and um, keep in mind that some people are just not, it, it's okay to fail. It's okay to yes. fail to have them give them a session. Right. Some people just are too neurotic, too autistic, too jittery, too untrusting. Either way, it, it doesn't have to be together. But some people just are not destined to try. 
maybe next time, but this time they just, you know, sorry, it, it doesn't work. And um, yeah. there are a couple clues when they come in that will give you an idea of, how, of their comfort level. One is if you, they should be able, you should ask them to take their shoes off when they get on the table, if they're going to get on the table. And if they have a difficult time taking their shoes off, this is a sign of discomfort. Does that make sense to you? Yep. I met some people where they were like, oh, can't I just leave my yeah. shoes on? Well, I'm, I might have to work on the feet, and I, may, I, I don't have to touch them, but I might have to work on the feet, and I, it would be better if you didn't have your shoes on, and that made them a little uncomfortable, but I re reassured them that I, if they did want me to touch their feet, I wouldn't. The other thing is, if you notice that they don't close their eyes, if they leave their eyes open mm -hmm. all the time, you can ask them to close their eyes because leaving their eyes open is a sign that they're not trusting what's going on. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So these observations, just and, and just whenever you see these kind of things and observe them, just be as comforting as possible and reassure them that nothing is going to, to go wrong. And, and we would prefer you to close your eyes because it's more comfortable and you will get in a more relaxed state with your eyes closed and that will help the healing. And if you don't want us to touch, I, I want me to touch, that's fine. Uh, if you don't trust that, that's fine. But you see, give them all the options you can to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Because then when you start the healing, they'll be in the most relaxed state possible, even though it might not be still relaxed enough to do a good Reiki session, at least you tried your hard, hardest and got them into a, a state that was semi-comfortable. So, but you're gonna find though, that the people that do trust your Reiki uh, and you start raking them, you'll, you'll have a hard time getting them off the table because they'll be so relaxed. They'll be so a part of the, the uh, healing that they, they can hardly move at the end. Many of my clients take 10 minutes to get off the table because they're so relaxed. They don't want to get off the table. They want to stay there and let the healing keep moving through them even though I stopped, they can still sense that the relaxation and the healing is going on. So if you have that, that's wonderful. Just remember, if you have an hour session, schedule an hour and a half, leave a half hour extra on the other side of that session for people that are going to dilly-dally. And don't put yourself too close together with other clients that you're going to run into the next session. Uh, that's just a, a, a thought that I have because I've had that happen. So I, I don't want that to happen anymore. <laughs> Somebody wanted to say something. Christine, you wanted to say something? No. Okay. Um, yeah, they might w not want to take off their shoes because um, they, they're afraid their feet are smelly. So it has nothing to do with Reiki. So oh, that's true too. But that is a comfort level though, still. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I have a question. Is yeah. this a good time to ask? Go ahead, yeah. Sorry, I was laughing about what you said, Max. <laughs> right. It was kind of funny. Um, I am a dental assistant and we had a lot of, I don't know why I went to medical, but we have a lot of um, issues with especially patients who are afraid of just being in a chair or um, never had experience of dentists. And a lot of times, you know, they call me. So um, what I'm doing, I'm holding their hand. You can see by body language, if they're uncomfortable, just like you said, guys, absolutely 100% true. That's what I'm looking for as well. And when their legs are crossed, they are not straight. And I ask them if they can put their head, legs straight. And usually doctor is asking me if I can work on them a little bit that's what he says go ahead do your thing which i don't know what that is they just say that i'm holding their right hand with my left hand with my right hand and first i talk to them for like a few seconds and then i said it's okay if i'm going to place my left hand on your on your um 
it's um, above the belly button usually. And I just tell them to focus on my, on my words. And I'm talking very calmly and softly. If they can only focus on the breathing. And I ask them to take a deep breath. And then like I'm counting about three seconds and let it out and do that. And I ask them how they feel. And in the meantime, doctor walks in and I will tell them that they will get injections. going to be very quick, but they're going to feel that and just focus on the breathing. I keep on talking that. And I don't know why this just happens. No one taught me that. And I'm just saying, and my question to you is there are sometimes people and do you get this in, in Reiki in a healing process? Do you get sometimes people that you feel like a block that it's kind of like if it's pushing me away, rarely that happens and you cannot work on them. Um, Yes, there's some things that you, we, you'll learn in higher classes that helps you with that. But um, there is a galactic Reiki treatment for that. But I, some people will just stop working on people because they, they're rejecting it, basically. They're rejecting that they're too afraid to, to go on with, with what's happening. And that's fine. If that happens... You should let them get up and leave because you do not want to force anyone into a Reiki treatment if they're afraid of it. It's just oh, not a good idea. Yeah, they, won't get it, yeah. they won't get it anyway. It's actually very uncomfortable for you too, I think. Don't you oh, feel definitely. Yeah. If you feel too much fear, you just say, you're, you're very afraid. And if you really don't want this treatment, I understand because... You're, you're just not ready for it yet. Perhaps sometime down the road, you can come back and uh, experience the Reiki treatment when you're not quite as afraid. But, you know, is there anything that I could do to make you not afraid? Is there anything I could do to help comfort you and put you in the right frame of mind? So you can try to comfort them a little more, but if they are totally afraid, there's not really much you can do about that. Max, do you agree with that? Yes, I wanted to add that um, one of the principles of Reiki, you don't do Reiki to people who reject it. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't have to ask for permission because it's obvious they would permit, like animals, children, uh, really sick people. But if somebody is, in principle, they don't want any of your Reiki help, you just don't. You hold yourself, you don't push Reiki on anyone who, is, who, is, who doesn't want it. Um, I just want to add something to this. Is it possible that something is attached to them and they, well, whoever or whatever is attached to them in their body or in their spirit, it's preventing them from healing? Yes. There's oftentimes attachments, but you still cannot deal with the attachment without their permission also. You can't just take it on yourself to deal with that. They have to be aware of it. You might be able to make them aware of it, which might frighten them even more. But um, at that time, if somebody's frightened, you realize they have an attachment, you should let them go and say that, if possible, you would like to talk to them at least again about having another treatment. Because if they eventually come back, you can deal with that with permission. Uh, actually, it's, it's a topic of higher levels of Reiki. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far into psychic reading. No, I wouldn't either. But basically, for the first, the initial levels, you trust the spirit to do the work. And yep. basically, you get the feedback from the spirit. If the energy flows, you do it. If it stops, you move to another position. If nothing works, you just easily give up without trauma to yourself or the patient. You just yes. do whatever it works. Mm -hmm. And then that's simple. You don't really have to analyze all these attachments. Because sometimes you overanalyze. And sometimes you think you know what you're doing. And um, the, the whole idea of something negative blocking is by itself is negative, right? Once I had that, once I had a client uh, who had shown the attachment of a beast. It was clearly a wild beast, like predator beast. And I assumed I have to, there is a word for that, but basically get, let it go, right? So I was working on that. Gently, but I intended the, to remove that beast from the person. 
and it caused great discomfort in the person. She was shaking, she was uh, showing lots of distress and saying, stop it, stop it. And I even stopped it, but I didn't remove my hands. And finally, even later I realized that it was her soul, right? You can't really remove the soul. It was an incarnation of a beast. Very enlightened, very a great healer, but initial one of past lives was not human, it was like a predator, cat-like person, right? So you, you know, and that's why it asked not to remove it because it, you shouldn't, right? <laughs> so overanalyzing was sort of, at that point, if I just let the Reiki go and not to, and not try to remove the beast, it would be much, much simpler. So being simple and staying positive, like very often we, we overanalyze and, and from our fear, we create that, negative yes. image and then you come to people like jim and a few other wonderful healers and somehow by miracle i can't really rationalize it they turn that negativity into positivity and you say oh thank you for even having that experience like like for example i have a diarrhea right and then it's a release right it's 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 a simple realization that any of the negative things can have a positive side right it's uh it's not what you do in reiki one but at least you don't get overly excited about negative images right that, that's the, the main principle stay positive stay positive uplift things right is it a good time for a break or do we have the topics to follow up on that before we do yes. the break? it's a good time we've been over an hour but i just wanted to add to that Yes, you, are, you come into every Reiki session with positivity and the belief and confidence that you can help and bring some kind of good action to this scenario. So it's always a work of positivity, love, and endorsement of your patient, patient in the sense that you're there to help them and love them and to bring them to the greatest fulfillment at that time so and sometimes when the trust is there they can let go of their negativity and let you put the positivity in where the negativity was does that make sense to you because when it leaves there's an empty space and you you can put something in that space and when they release their negativity to you and let it go to wherever not to you of course you're 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 protected but um if you if they release that negativity you can put something beautiful and positive and healing in that space where they released that bit of negativity i came on this woman one time at the ymca where we did some uh work and i touched her head and that's all i had to do and she started to cry sob and I said, all I could say was, your heart is broken. I said, let's heal it. Let's start to heal that broken. She said, yes, my heart is broken. So that it, as soon as I touched her, she began to cry and sob. And I didn't, didn't understand that. She didn't know me from anyone. And I didn't know who she was, but the energy the spirit worked immediately and they said she has a broken heart and we started to heal a broken heart the very touch of her head so it was amazing sometimes miracles happen so it is beautiful all right thank you yeah we have tons of things to continue tons of branches yeah. of the topic so let's continue in uh, how many minutes do you want uh, I don't know. About 13 minutes. Yeah. It would yeah, be good. just a few minutes after 11 my time. Right. We'll go to 2 o'clock my time. Yeah. A yeah. couple minutes after. Couple All minutes right. After All right. All right. Very I good. Guess. I also wanted, I mute people. That. Yes. That that had some resonance with me. I felt that before as well, but I'm I'm like an unfocused crystal. I, I don't know exactly what I can do. 
or I, how I yeah. could help. And I felt that before as well, but I didn't know how I could help that person. When you... You're, you're still very young. You're still young. I, I was old when I... I went through a, a life of learning uh, how to be who I am right now. Oh, I agree and, with that. Um, it's interesting because everything in my life, even when I talk to people that knew, have known me for a long, long time, they knew that there was something psychic, something spiritual, something, something. They weren't sure what, but they knew that something eventually would happen. And every time I tell people about my, my journey, no one's surprised that knows me, has known me for a long time. No one is surprised that I'm doing what I'm doing. And that I find surprising. So mm. they all said, oh, yeah, well, we knew there was something there. We weren't sure what it was. But my whole life has been building up to this point. So uh, it's amazing if I look back and I talk to people that I've known for a long time, they'll say, oh, yes, you've been doing this for all your life. You've been doing that for all your life. And I never put it together that it was even remotely spiritual or psychic or anything. But they did. So... Hmm. It's, it's very interesting. So you're young. Give it a little time. You, it'll come around, I am sure. Oh, I, I'm sure it will. You're, uh, you're just young. So um, I didn't start channeling until I was 58. So oh, wow. I didn't think you were that old. I'm 61. Oh, so, no way. You yes, I'm 61. Like, you're, 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 you're gray, but you don't look that old. Good for you, man. Thank you. It's unclean living. No, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> I would have never guessed, Jim. Never. Yeah. Never. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm 61, but Spirit is not done with me yet, so he doesn't want me to look too old. <laughs> so and, I have. And, and I have blessed to... you with an occupation that you can do well beyond retirement age. Absolutely. So. And will be doing it well beyond retirement age. And I feel very vital. I feel very healthy most of the time. I, as I get older, of course, I have those days where I am tired. No doubt. But I snap out of it because I really don't. I really don't feel old. Don't feel old. So when you tried to help the lady with the broken heart, actually, yeah, yes. Did Not many you, words were spoken. Did, was um, it all done just right there? Or yes. did you actually, did you, I went over, where did you start I, channeling through? Um, no, I didn't channel there because it was at the YMCA. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Was, uh, not, not channeling, but direct energy. I, yes, I directed the energy. What I did is I just listened to my guides and what they told me to do. I had... The first thing I did, I went over to this lady, and it's very unusual, but the first thing I did was touch her head. And I usually do not do that. I usually am on the heart side, touching the shoulder and the elbow. That's the first thing I usually do. Um, but for some reason, I came and I touched her head. She broke into tears, and I said, I heard a voice say, your heart is broken. And I just said that. I said, your heart is broken. And she said, yes. And, and I was like, I can help. And so what I did is they told me to go around her body uh, clockwise and encourage her energy field to move because she had been in such a deep depression that her body, body energy was so low that she needed her energy field to start moving a little bit better. So I went clockwise around the body and started the energy field moving better before I invoked the, uh, some of the symbols from Reiki 2 that were going to help in emotional ways and spiritual ways. And so um, she continued to cry for most of the session, which was only 20 minutes long, by the way. Because when you're at the uh, YMCA, they only allow 20 minutes per person. And usually I do hour sessions. But at the end of this 20 minutes, I asked them to do as much as they could. 
and she hugged me for like an entire minute afterwards. And um, I didn't even know who this lady was, but she just was grabbed onto me and was like, um, she felt so much better. And I was like, I'm glad it really, you know, it wasn't really me, but I, I told her that too. I said, I had a lot of help from spirit. So, and she just couldn't even really say anything. She didn't really talk to me about it, but things were very, very much better when she, than when we were done. And we didn't really talk that much. I have to say. That's a beautiful story. Yeah, I I will never forget it. Um, it it's, was also sort of, it's also crazy that the same spirits that told you to go to her also told you how to begin her healing. Yes, they told me go to her head. And I mean, I wasn't, I just did it subconsciously, but they had to have told me because I don't do that. Um, I don't remember them telling me go to their head, but it had to be a subconscious suggestion because I usually go to the the left shoulder and elbow to start. And uh, I went right to the head. And she, I'm, she might have noticed that I didn't do that with any other person. That might have been part of the reaction. But um, I don't know. I really don't. But I do know that they that it was an immediate reaction, and it was like, whoa, okay, that's something very unusual. So she had been, she was there to get some, at least a partial healing for a broken heart that had made her so depressed that she was hardly mobile. That let's, was what they were telling me, hardly uh, mobile. Uh, Jim, can you hear me? Yes. Um, we have about an hour left. Now it's 11.11 11 in my clock. Um, uh, what we need to do is to answer urgent questions before we leave until the next class. We need to show your, your bed is waiting behind you, the table to show something there. And also- Well, the we thing is, we're not gonna get the, all that done today because we don't have enough time. Right, and also so we, we need to do, do the hand positions next week if you, you want. And uh, we need to do the initiation. Yes, because uh, that's going to take uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, we can stop maybe a little later than noon. Maybe we start a little later, so we can stop a little later. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I, I wanted to comment um, w one important comment about uh, what we teach is that we share the experience of practitioners, like Jim has full-blown Reiki practice at his home, and uh, Jim does channeling online, channeling in person, and Reiki in person, and often combines Reiki and channeling, right? So the person would be on, uh, on a bed and on the table, and Jim would do silent part plus speaking part. Now, uh, it doesn't mean that everybody has to go that path, right? Absolutely. Uh, many of you learn Reiki and then we don't become practitioners, right? It, it's, it's just fine. You can go even all three, three levels of Reiki and still do something else. Um, Reiki is also a tool to heal yourself, right? To heal and spiritually upgrade yourself. Keep on cleaning your chakras, cleaning your channels and um, it becomes just a conscious routine you're doing it anyway but then it becomes a conscious routine of everyday meditations everyday practice to to know what's happening with your energy and direct it properly you um, develop your other energetic things right like um Willpower, solar plexus power, willpower is essential because as you grow out of the lower chakras into higher chakras, you uh, become much more closer connected to the law of attraction. So whatever you think becomes reality, law of attraction, and it's opposite law of repulsion, right? Whatever... Um, so some things just go away because you crave them so much, right? 
So that um, a chakra activity is becomes conscious. So you work on not only on yourself, basically, but you work on others. And as your energy becomes higher and higher, as your spiritual growth continues, you not only affect health of self and others, you have to affect the events. So Jim and few of other my um, healers, they are actually capable of of healing the situations, healing the events, healing the business situations. And typically good businessmen do it anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Do it. <laughs> right. And you just realize that most of the things which you do seem to be done outside, you do so from inside. You work inside on your inner soul work, and that changes your outside perspective because it's it's just a complex illusion. It's a complex illusion, and uh, it's more efficient to work on yourself and by that changing outside. So, so that's a take-home question, uh, take-home message. You don't, you don't have to pl- fit yourself in the idea of a practitioner. You might. You will are welcome. We, we share, but um, here is a disclaimer: we don't take responsibility for what you do with this Reiki, right? We give you the tools, and then you use these tools for your lessons. You use Reiki only positively, but it doesn't have to be used in that specific pattern. It can be used in in many other patterns, too. Also, Reiki energy can help you bring energy to your highest excitement. If you add Reiki energy to different things, Reiki energy is healing, yes. But it is also healing for all kinds of things within you, your psyche, your body, your spirit. So if you have a highest excitement and you bring Reiki energy to that, such as if you want to become a channeler, if you want to become empathic, if you want to help people in even greater ways, Reiki energy can open up areas in your, in your psychic mind that will help you to link to these things because Reiki energy is beautiful, positive. If it wasn't for Reiki energy, I wouldn't be a channeler because I was channeling. I was Reiki doing Reiki when I started channeling and that helped to open up those energy fields. At that time, that is what I was supposed to be doing when I started channeling and I didn't even know what channeling was. And so, uh, thank you, Max, for having aliens all around you. So, I appreciate <laughs> that. Because they were there to, I was given the opportunity to channel because they wanted to talk to Max. So, that I know. And they wanted me to be a channel. So, I, was, I'm, I feel very blessed about that. Oh, can't hear you. A Reiki channeling and meditation go together. Right That's now, let's right. focus on the beginning. We are at Reiki 1A class. You will go home. Reiki 1B class is next week, same time. Um, say same page on the internet. I, on this page, which I called interim page, I will post homework. There will be some reading. And uh, in addition to the reading, um, go ahead and practice. Basically, that is a challenge, like normal Reiki classes, local, right? You locally practice. Here we give you the instruction, but you have to do your practice yourself. Uh, it is possible because time is an illusion, space is an, is an illusion. The spirit knows its ways. The spirit brought you to that class and spirit, the spirit will help you to, to get initiated. Uh, we just learn it is sufficient. We we do the initiation, and then typically what happens, people get their buzz in their hands and get the the hands uh, initiated. So um, the initiation of the hands, you will get the the initiation. Jim, when do we start? Maybe about ten minutes, right? You already. Right? Yes, uh, somewhere in that area. 13 minutes, something like that. I will just... I'm not sure who's coming to do it, but one of uh, either Takur or Ish or someone will come. Uh, I would ask not Ish. 
Is, is it true that Ish is a draconian? Yes. I somehow don't feel like draconians are very good Reiki teachers, but maybe it's my, my mis misunderstanding. It's your belief systems. It's my belief system, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are reptilians. Yeah, we have tons of reptilian DNA and um, anatomy in us. So it, It's my understanding that there are several types of reptilians that are incredible healers. All right. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I take Ishmo like as advisor on, on, on the war than, than on, but yeah, I guess killing and healing is about the same thing, just a little difference in sound, right? Uh, I by think the way, he, he wants you to know that he can do everything. <laughs> I, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, so I want to just to continue, let me continue on, on, the, on the energy. So right. the energy comes, just place hands, you can touch or you can keep them in the air. There is a little difference, but it is equally efficient. Uh, the energy goes through the middle of the palm, goes golden energy, which is diffused like a diffused light. It goes, it's smart, it goes wherever it wants to. So, so when you use that energy, you just let it go and trust whatever happens. And there is also the energy which comes from the fingers like beams of energy. And there you can direct it. It's more like for you to use your masculine, expansive idea what you want to do, like a surgeon, like a healer with an active idea of what you want to do. So aliens through gym usually use it by touching the, the bones and the joints with the fingers. And it also is very efficient if there is a certain sharp pain, like touching with the fingers like that. The, the, the golden also goes, but you use primarily the active sending the energy through the, through the fingertips. And also when you do the, the work in the air, also you work with the fingertips too, or you can work with the whole palm. So there is like one position, which is fingers, another position, which is palm. And there is, for the palm, there is like two options. One is like straight, which means like simple, plain. And then there is more like parabolic antenna, more like a dish network, dish which focuses, it's like a lens which focuses things. So, so relaxed dish. And also I use that, which is a combination of everything, but very relaxed. And just by changing the position of the, of, of their bones, their fingers, the whole palm structure, you can, you can manipulate the energy. Play with it, see how it feels. Some people feel it right away. Some people, some people um, don't, and that's all right. Sometimes you are a great healer and you still don't. You're just kind of uh, deaf to, to these little things. Um, so get feedback because many of things I learned just from feedback from people, not from what I feel. Um, so to energize your hands, there is lots of many things, lots of uh, options, but usually just intent is sufficient for us. When we have got into Reiki, we, we don't do much. Um, we just intend and you feel it starts flowing. And so sometimes you just pay attention to suffering of others and it starts flowing strongly. From now on, as you drive, and you see the emergency somewhere accident, keep your one hand on the wheel and second you can send the energy. And if you have to keep both hands on the wheel, it's still possible to send energy in without doing anything with your hands. It's absolutely take your imaginary sword hand. And <laughs> and you, have, you have energy that can go out through the eyes and the third eye as well. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes you, like I, I want to put my hands on, on my body when I do self-healing. Like typical, that's my typical position. And sometimes the, the hands are not available for that. Like, or you need to touch some, some part of the body which is not as easy to touch, like the foot. It, it doesn't really matter. You can still keep the hands here and direct the energy to whatever part of your body or somebody else's body. Like when I do remote healing, 
you can send remote healing like that, but you can send remote healing by keeping your hands on yourself. On, when you lay on the side, you can do, you can work on your, any part of the body. You can touch almost every part of the body, right? Even, even the back, but you can treat, treat the back from this side. It, uh, the clothing is not an obstacle for Reiki. Uh, the Reiki energy can go through the, through the body. And when I do remote healing, I actually realized I don't really have to go to do it from outside of the body. I can, can go right to the, to the needed place and work right there. It's like transparent, right? It's a little gross maybe in the beginning to think that you're inside somebody's body, but you get used to that. It's, it's more efficient. So your homework is first to practice your energy on yourself, on yourself, on uh, close people, friends, and family who are receptive to that animals, plants, trees, water, water, food, uh, lakes, ra uh, rivers, weather, events, computers, cars. I, yes. I sort of wish we'd have gotten to the hand position so that you could have practiced it during the week. However, um, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get that far because there's just not enough time. But we can do that next week. And I do, whenever we do get to the hand positions, and I want you to practice them, e even in your mind, if you can. Are those in your the part of the book you sent to them, Max? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. The hand positions will be in the book. So if you can practice them just by looking at the book, do that during the week because see if you can feel the energy. Make sure that your left hand is on top of your right hand because Reiki is feminine and the left side of the body is the feminine side so the left hand is always dominant also remember when you um well you won't have to draw the signs so we won't go into that but um remember to uh, to think about what your highest excitement is about reiki during the week why is it that you want to do reiki what is it that's drawing you to this I know that some of you have given some of your ideas already, but you know what? I think that in your mind that there's even more things going to come out during the week about Reiki that you didn't uh, think of before, and that's going to be important to you either continuing or not continuing to Reiki 2 or 3. Healing is very important to some people, and it actually is great energy for you as well because – in many, in many cases, the energy is healing you as it's healing other people. As it's going through your body and coming out your hands, it, it has to come through you too. So if you're intending for, for a wonderful healing for the person on the table, you're also getting a healing of something in you as well. I know that after every Reiki session that I have, I always feel energized because I got all that fresh new energy from all over the universe and from Mother Earth. And I think everybody should feel that. They shouldn't be like concentrating on pushing your energy out. No, you should be concentrating on bringing energy through you. You should be concentrating on the energies outside of you coming through you and, uh, and mixing with your energy and the patient's energy so that you have more than one area of energy you're working with. These are the magical energies. Your particular energy may not be that strong. So you're opening yourself up to these other energies to come through you, to come through and heal. This is the exciting part, is that you're using the energies of the universe. They're coming through you. They're helping to heal you, and they're creating a great healing experience for your client. So it's actually way exciting, I think, to do Reiki energy healing of all different kinds. There's many different kinds of Reiki healing now. There's, there's the Asui, there's the Holy Fire, there's the Aquarian Fire, all, there's the Galactic Reiki coming up. So all these have, their, 
very similar energies that can be used, but they can also be used in such wonderful, wonderful ways. So keep that in mind that this is not just Reiki, but it's Reiki. It's expansive. It's beautiful. It's large. It's not small. It's a very big thing. You're drawing energy from many, many universal places, and you're bringing it in and, uh, and helping someone to feel better. So it's a great and wonderful thing. Right. So think about that during the week and how, who can use your energy, who can you help to heal, can you heal yourself, many things, just keep it in mind, heal your pets and animals. Mm-hmm. So, um, typical session, basically catch someone who is interested, uh, turn off cell phones, find specific time when, and place where you're protected, uh, music helps, you know, yes. just play music from a, from a cell phone speaker, a speaker of the cell phone is sufficient. Uh, just find the music for Reiki. Actually, I post tons of music so you can grab it oh. from there. But I, I use pretty much all either classical or new age music. Sometimes it's, I mean, it just helps them to relax. It's really pretty and soft. Yeah, like just going on YouTube and playing uh, music for Reiki from YouTube is sufficient. Uh, laying down is fine. Sitting is fine. Uh, many of my young people who are more flexible, uh, they do it on the floor, on a, on, a, on a little blanket or a mat or yoga mat. It's, it's actually very nice if you can bend down. <laughs> uh, with your partner during the night if you if they agree you you can practice that on on them too it's um, it helps them to get to sleep so you know when my any of my big family have problems sleeping i use reiki to help them with their permission to to get them asleep and usually it works wonderfully so um positions are just fine it really doesn't matter that much whatever it feels comfortable you can until you learn classical positions, you you can um, improvise. And um, uh, typically in Reiki, you go from the head to the bottom, uh, to the foot. But um, if you go other way, it's just as, as, as good. Many, many other energy healing arts go the other way around. Um, if they're new to that, you have to explain basically what you know about Reiki, what we just explained, that it is. Uh, an assisted meditation and keep it simple you don't have to lift a mountain basically just a fact that they accept it and the fact that you intend it is sufficient so a typical session usually lasts 45 minutes you can run it short for demo versions like sometimes it could be 7 minutes 12 minutes 20 minutes half an hour but you feel how energy flows so sometimes you say let me just try a little bit and then it goes and goes and you look at the clock 45 minutes is a very typical number because that's how the the the, the energy moves around um i always um say to them don't plan anything very active or especially anything very um uh, aggressive like sports or meetings after the Reiki so plan re the rest after uh, plan to rest to take a nap or rest after after the session that is absolutely essential and um, so give them you the the session remove some of the protection some of the blockages and this, this shield and blocks are restored only after they sleep so be between the Reiki session and anything active like work situation or arguments or sports it has, has to be asleep otherwise people can harm them you know they're too open so they might harm and they should expect to be relaxed for, for, for the for the rest of the day it's 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 very natural to stay relaxed it's amazing if you like live active life you run 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 then you get reiki and then Oh, that's how it feels healing. That, relaxing. Oh, that's how relaxing it feels. You just forget what it is. It's just, oh gosh, 
It's a completely different world, you know. Nothing matters anymore. You just relax and restore, right? All right. So that's about it, I guess. You work on yourself, work on others, practice, read the book. Um, all the homework assignment will be on the same page which you got for the to, to participate here. I think, Jim, um, I got the main instruction out. So we can... Okay, very good. Excellent. And, um, okay, right now we'll do the attunements. I, I can't see all the names of all the people. Yeah, folks, can you, uh, can you show your... Um, I will do it just in a second, I think. I have because to... I know... Okay, let me tell you who I know is there. Joanna T.C., Eileen, uh, Anya, uh, let's see, Justin, Christine, Kristen, is that it? Um, I can't see you though, I'm just re remembering the names that I saw. Yes. Uh, hold on a second, I will press some Did I miss anyone? TC, I got TC, yeah. Where yeah. is that? Joanna, yeah. TC, Eileen, Chris. Here we go. All is on the screen now. I found it. Oh, they are? All I see is uh, Joanna TC Eileen. That's all I see. If you, Jim, if you put your cursor on top of the screen. On top of the top screen? Top right, yes. Yeah, top right. You'll see two okay. little, there's one that kind of looks like a Rubik's Cube, and then there's another one that has four arrows. And the one that kind of looks like a Rubik's Cube will allow you to bring oh. all of the names into one, I believe. Okay, bring all, if you can bring those names. I have yeah, someone I assisting me. Up to the top right. You have to click on the Rubik's Cube, yes. That off, yeah. Yeah. All right, I see. Okay, let's see. There's there six people. Oh, Christine, Anya, Joanna, TC, Justin, and Eileen. Is that it? Yep. yep. Alrighty, I can see that now, so I don't want uh, whoever comes in to miss anybody. That's why. Oh, I, by the way, uh, huh? do you want to include your people in the room? Yes, there's two people in the room here. Do you want to I have Lana and David here. Why don't you do attunements on them as well? Well, I, I actually attuned them already yesterday, but I will be doing their attunement again today. Oh, okay. So I will actually include you, but you will have to do it mentally more than, than you already had the physical, so. So, all right. Uh, at least, it won't be me this time though, it will be either to Kerr. I'm not sure who's coming, let's find out. <laughs> I'm going to call somebody in to do the final attunement for all of you. But before I do, let me tell you a little bit about what will happen. Um, they will be in, in back of you, and then in front of you, and then in back of you, and then in front of you. And that will be it. it. But they will let you know where they are, I'm sure. But you should be holding your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart. A prayer position in front of your heart, okay? Because there will be a time when they will tell you to lift your hands over your head. So that will, there will be a time for that. There also will be a time when they're in front of you that they'll ask you to bring your hands out like this. All right. I okay. muted everybody. Do you need some people to speak when you do that? No, I just want, I will just let them know. Well, let's, I don't know how they're going to do it. I'll call somebody and see who's coming. All right. Meanwhile, Max, could you tell me how um, I could get the book? Is it going to go through the slow mail or is it going to go through an, the email? Uh, let's discuss it later. Now we have a, um, an attunement and then later we discuss it after that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Greetings, I am Takur. Hi Takur, welcome, thank you. Greetings all. I have come to give you your Reiki 1 attunement. We may do it slightly different in the galactic world than you do it on your planet. However, I heard Jim say to you to put your hands in the prayer position in front of your heart. That is correct. And also, I will be opening your hands at one time for a particular reason. For the mysteries of the universe, if you will. But right now, I would like to do a small prayer before we start. Thank you for these participants in this most wonderful Reiki One class. Energy healing is a most important part of life and reality. Being able to give your energy to someone else and bring in other energies for healing purposes is of a higher nature and brings you to a higher place in standing with God Almighty because he understands what it is that you are doing and he is thankful. We ask that you be serious about this beautiful gift. You all have the ability to heal with your hands, but please remember some of you will have a greater gift than others. Ask God to increase it. This particular attunement will help to increase that energy also. It will help to you to have confidence in what you do. It will help you to give you a greater energy capacity. I will be coming one to one to each of you and I will tell you what to do. Hopefully I will not miss anyone and this will be all-inclusive. Max, I will also include you in this particular attunement. You, you can never be attuned too many times. Thank you. Thank you, God, for this time. Make it special. Make it holy. Make it fulfilling. Make it beautiful and encouraging. I will start with Max, since he is your Thank main. You. I'm coming behind you and putting my hands behind you on your shoulders. I will do a small prayer. And I will do a symbol. And I will also do the other portions of this attunement. I will bring your hands above your head. Thank you, you may lower them. I am moving on to the next person, Christine. I am putting my hands upon your shoulders. And I will repeat the same ceremony with you that I did with Matt. You may now put them back into the prayer position. I'm now going behind you once again for a very short moment, and then I'll be coming back in front of you for the final presentation, or the final part of the attunement. Max, I am standing behind you, and I will say a prayer over your head. Mm -hmm.
I know that humans sometimes present this prayer out loud, but it is our custom to be silent and prayerful. The prayer is the same. We pray that you accept this attunement, that it will become part of who you are, that it is a success for you, and a blessing as well. Christine, I am standing behind you, and I will be giving the same similar prayer. Anya, I am now standing behind you, and I will give you the same prayer. Joanna, I am standing behind you and I will be giving you this beautiful prayer. TC, I am standing behind you and I will give you the same prayer. Justin, I am standing behind you, and I am giving you this prayer. Yes. Eileen, I'm standing behind you and I'm giving you this prayer. Lorna, I am standing behind you with this prayer I give you. David, I am standing behind you and I'm giving you this prayer.
Finally, I will stand in front of you all one last time, and it will be the final seal of your attunement. It will be the final thing that closes your heart around and grasps the understanding that healing is a most vital port, part of humanity and that you are part of it, the healing community. Not only doctors and lawyers may do healing, but each human has the right and has the energy to do healing. But you have been chosen. You have decided to move forward, step out, if you will, and become counted among those that are actual healers in the community. And this will seal that bond between you and those that you will touch to bring healing to them. When I tell you to, I will ask you to move your arms in a certain position and you will understand. Max, I am standing in front of you and I am giving you the final seal that you are a healer and that you are important to the community, important to the galaxy, important to all those who will accept what you have to offer. Bring your right hand up and place it on your left shoulder. Bring your left hand up and place it on your right hand, right shoulder, and this will seal you and cross your heart. Mm -hmm. You do not have to hold it for only as long as you wish, but this is your final seal. Thank you. Christine, take this gift of healing that you have received and that has always been a part of you and use it wisely and beautifully. I see that there are animals that you have touched with your healing energy with your love, with your caring, and also humans. Thank you so much for your thoughtfulness and your selflessness. Bring your right hand up and put it on your left shoulder, your left hand up and put it on your right shoulder, and you are sealed with this gift of healing, and you are free to move into the community as a healer. Anya, thank you for who you are. You've been through so much. There has been so much turmoil and pain. You understand what the gift of healing does and what it can mean to others and to yourself. Let this be a personalized gift to you, to the world, from you to the world. And may it speak volumes of who you are as a giver and who you are as a light worker. Bring your right hand up and put it on your left shoulder and your left hand up and put it on your right shoulder and seal yourself as a beautiful healer and let this speak volumes of who you are to other people. Joanna, I see that you are wanting to heal, that this energy is a gift to you as well, that you are strong in the healing powers. Let this continue to grow. Let this affirmation go out into the community and let them feel your energy and know that you are a loving healer and that you want to help others. Bring your right hand up to your left shoulder and your left hand up to your right shoulder and be sealed with this healing modality and be well and use it proudly and with great confidence. TC, I see that there is so much in you and you want this to be working for you in a great way. And it will. Let it work. You have great integrity about what you believe healing should be. And that is a great thought. 
Thank you very much for being a part of this. Let this encourage you and strengthen you as a healer. Let, you, let it encourage your thoughts to move on and become even stronger. Bring your right hand up and put it on your left shoulder, your left hand up and put it on your right shoulder and let the world know that the energy in you is healing, positive and beautiful. You are a wonderful person. Go out into the community, and if you need to, heal those around you with great love and great confidence. Justin. <laughs> You've always felt a part and not a part. Let this solidify that you are a part of a group of healers that are unique to the world. Energy healers are needed on this planet, and energy healers are wanted on this planet. And you are a great and wonderful healer, but you have so much more to offer. Let this seal bring you into a new understanding, a new step forward in your, in your search for understanding, knowledge, and freedom. Bring your right hand up to the left shoulder and the left hand up to the right shoulder and be sealed with a great power of healing, for you do have it and it will work for you. Be well and use it wisely. Eileen, I see that you already are a healer in many senses. I see that your understanding of it grows all the time. And that healing is more than healing to you, but it is something of the soul, and that is beautiful. I love you for that, and I love the fact that you are here. Continue to move forward, make this part of your path, and heal those that need it, that are there, that you know that need healing. I understand that you are moved, and that is a beautiful thing. Bring your right hand up to your left shoulder, your left hand up to your right, and be sealed with the beauty of the fact that you always have and always will be a beautiful healer, and you will always be stepping forward in intensity with this energy. Lorna, you are learning so many things right now and becoming so solid in all the ways of healing, understanding, channeling, empathy, beauty, integrity. You are trying to bring everything into one understanding, but there are so many understandings. Do not let it confuse you, but just grasp it and know that you are special and that you are understood. Do not try to understand yourself. That will come. Let this healing come and let it be sealed within you. Bring your right hand up to your left shoulder, your left hand up to your right, and let the healing be sealed within you. You do have healing energies that will be used in the future. Be of good cheer and move forward with great confidence. David, there is healing in you and there is understanding of many things. Move forward as you will. Your destiny is already at your fingertips. Remember to keep your eye on the prize constantly. Keep your eyes on the things that will be coming. Rise your right hand up to your left shoulder, your left hand up to your right shoulder, and be sealed with the fact that this energy is also part of who you are within this destiny. Now I give you all a final blessing and tell you that love is the greatest of all the gifts, the greatest essence of healing, for without the love and the wanting to give, 
there will be no giving or healing. There will be no understanding. There will be no peace. There will be no great positivity. But bring all these things into love and let love be the center of all things. And it will be a power that is greater than anything that you can imagine. Much love. Much love. Hello? Hello. Is it Jim? Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you. Let me, uh, I had to lie down because it's just uh, too much for me. Uh, during the class, I felt, um, I felt normal, like busy acting. And then when the attunement started, I, when the old pains came back, I felt so relaxed and tired and I had to lay down. But, you know, that's, that's how it works. Usually when, uh, when there is a pain and you just schedule an appointment, by the time of, of an appointment comes away because the healing starts right at the moment when you schedule. It's not, you know, it, it spreads, spreads not only to the appointment, it spreads before the appointment. It's kind of the wow. magic with time happens. I wanted to give you a, a meditation, a guided meditation before we close. It will be a short one. Basically, the idea is that now you are attuned. You are tuned and uh, I will mute someone. Hold on. I'm already muted. Okay. Uh, Okay, I'm muted. If anybody needs to speak, unmute yourself. All right, so um, basically, I'll start doing the medita Reiki meditations. It's a regular meditation where you also place your hands on yourself and then invite the healing. And um, it can be short, like 12 minutes, and can be long, like 45 minutes. I, I like to lay down very straight in a protected environment. Sometimes I put music on, sometimes I... It is in silence. I put the earmuffs and uh, a ma eye mask to, to to keep me like really like isolated from light and sound. Lock the door, turn on the cell phone. And uh, the idea is to shift beyond thinking. Focus on the point of the heart and uh, collapse all your thinking. And usually it's almost impossible, but there is there are a few seconds, sometimes a few seconds, sometimes it's longer when you really shift into the spirit dimension and uh, the, the thought is not valid anymore there. And you know you did the right thing, that the meditation was effective because when you come back, you feel healed, you feel refreshed. And also for me, it's always often, almost always, uh, the sense of being there at home and then coming back here, like being dragged into this pain, the world of pain. But, but uh, basically, you know, it's your choice. You come back and uh, you serve there. So that's the idea of service. So let's start the meditation. Uh, it'll be short. <laughs> O yarana harana harana Allah So breathe consciously breathe deeply and when you inhale take in the energy from the universe suck in the prana absorb the healing energy 
And when you breathe out, send it to the heart. Slowly and fully inflate the heart with a flame of healing golden fire. And imagine, grow, create a ball of healing energy in the heart. So that's the main meditation you do, and that's the main meditation you teach your Reiki clients. So that's to focus on, on, the, on the breathing and on growing the healing energy in the heart. And if there is a, an organ which requires healing, then the heart energy then distributes there and in, in develops it and shares with that organ the place of pain and heals. Alamaya Raya Nahaya Haya Rahaina Humahana Humahana Ohaya Rana Humahaya Nahumahaya And now as you are a Reiki healer, a big transformation started and it will include clearing up, cleaning up straightening up you become much more pure to be a healer you have to be pure and by serving others you become pure pure you become clean full of light and full of happiness positive optimistic positive healing bringing life bringing balance bringing happiness Oh, Rana, oh, Rana, oh, Rana, oh, Rana, Maya Hanamana, oh, Rana, Hanamana, Mana, 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 and intend yourself to go up higher and higher in spiritual vibration up and up and you can help with your hands just lifting the air up or you can imagine your hands just pushing pushing up up like throwing little golden sparkles into the air helping the fire to go up the air going up like and as you do that, count one, two, three, four, five, and lift yourself up until you feel the buzz of lifting up, feel the buzz of spiritual vibration lifting up, and go into the space of peace and happiness, space of Divine Mother, space of creation, where there is so much happiness and where is no logical thought, there is no words, it's beyond words, it's just vibration of timelessness, eternity, and peace. Allah Naraya O Maya Hana 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 And this is all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Reiki welcomes you. As you welcome Reiki, Reiki welcomes you. You become one, you become united. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't rush back up, but you know, you're done, you're, you're cooked. <laughs> you can unmute yourself and you can chat if you like. Thank you for that, Max. That was energetic man you have some wicked output man <laughs> thank you thank you max thank, thank you, you jim for uh, thank, you. Thank, you. 
Thanks so much. It was very intense. Amazing. <laughs> See you Thank next you week. Much energy. Thank you. Incredible. Incredible energy. Thank you. I need somebody. Oh, I see Anya up there. Yeah. Hi, Anya. Hi. I didn't, hi. Hi. Did everybody get anything, get stuff out of the class? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Loads of stuff. It was amazing. <laughs> yes, it was amazing. Yeah. Thank you for co-creating this class. It was one of the most balanced classes. We, and yes. live communication, live questions, and uh, live connection to you. It was much easier, much better than yes, it was beautiful. Because one. It's not monologue, it's, it's a dialogue, which is really helpful. And actually, we, we were able to cover most of what was supposed to be. So wonderful. And, Excellent. And do your homework now. <laughs> yes. There's tons more to read. It's like a big path of, of, of studying. Do your homework. <laughs> I usually say, uh, everybody comes here to study medicine. Some study it as doctors, others as patients. Make a choice. <laughs> now, when you start Reiki on somebody or an animal, where do you start from? You said you don't start with, um, you know, crown chakra. You start from the heart. Uh, I, I, I actually start where I feel red. A lot of times that will be right at the, the left shoulder and elbow. I just start by and see if I can feel any energy there. But when they say they have, uh, if it's an animal, I just uh, go, I put my hands on it, on the shoulders, and I see if I can feel anything. And sometimes down by the butt, right up, because the, um, believe it or not, the chakras on animals are a little different. The solar plexus chakra is on the back part of a dog and not on the stomach or not in the front part, but is actually on the back. So one of their chakras is actually different. But it's, uh, I usually start with the shoulders and butt on a, on, or close to the back, close to the, like above the tail. So to see if they have any problems in those areas. Those are usually common areas for animals is right above their legs, the shoulders, and the, above the legs and the back. I always start from the head. Head is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. But some people some, are, you know, require a Reiki answer. So, so if your head doesn't work, then they work on, on, on feet. And some people just are all their energy, they're the focus of the energy. With the horses that I work with, um, they usually position their body for me. Uh -huh. um, They'll either go backwards or forwards, or they'll put a little distance, but they're not going completely away. So um, horses are really nice to work with. Yes, and they, the animals can feel the energy, when, especially when you're working with animals, they can pretty much feel that energy. And sometimes it's a little uncomfortable if you keep your hands stationary for too long, they'll move away. They don't want you to keep your hand just stationary. They want you to, to move your hand. But I keep my hand stationary for a little bit, and then I move it. And then I keep it stationary for like a few seconds, and I move it to let the energy come in. But they don't like you, they don't like you just holding on to them. They, they prefer the petting. Yep, yep, yep. Um, you, on one hand, you pet, and on another hand, you send Reiki. Or both hands, exactly. both hands you pet and the send Reiki at the same time, it's possible. Yes, it is possible to do that too. Any more burning questions? I think we are, we are, we are half an hour over time now. Well, I was going to ask you about the book. How remind, would you remind me what's the question about the book? I forgot. Um, you said that you're sending us a book, but oh, it's electronic. how is it being sent? Electronic, the same link you used to connect, it's uh, the book, I will place the book right there. It will be updated, the link, will, the page will be updated. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention too is um, one of the many books I've read on Reiki is that it's um, also intention that um, I can send um, maybe remote healing, especially to horses that are sick. And um, I could just say, keep the energy flowing for as long as they need it. Or you can um, do it for people like um, 
if this person needs it just in the morning or when they're, you know, just, it doesn't have to be just when you're um, present there. It could also be, uh, you could also uh, um, program it and say, um, maybe every Friday when this person is doing this particular activity, send Reke to it. And then, just remember, yes. and then just remember to charge it, recharge oh, okay. it. Uh -huh. Yeah, intention is a wonderful thing. You can do a lot of things with intention. So that's cool. Um, this connection after the, the, the session is essential. Basically, you, you may intend uh, for the energy to flow, but you're, you're yourself, you disconnect, you kind of close, you shift out of the, turn away from, the, from that session so you can move on. You don't have yeah. to carry with you, with you all connections to all your patients because it becomes unbearable. Uh, another important thing is like, you, it's close to impossible for the beginner to stay in a high vibration all the time. So don't over stretch your capacity up down like like breathing you go into reiki state you go into healer state and then you come back and you know do your other things which might require different always require different vibrations different protection different energy so you go to higher chakra to lower chakra it's it's absolutely normal to work through your lower chakras doing other stuff you can go argue with someone go speak on the phone and and argue there and then switch back to Reiki. Don't mix them together. It, it's uh, keeping them separate in time is, uh, is art, which is, you know, we use it all the time. I also use um, Reiki crystal grids, you know, yes. like for um, groups or for um, particular people or for the world or for, oh, yeah. you know, rescue ranches or for the idea, like my favorite one is, um, for all those who are abused, the abuser, and those who witness the abuse. I have a, a Reiki grid for that. Absolutely. Oh, cool. There is a Reiki grid, and um, that's in the book, I think. Is it part of what you said? Uh, not in this book, but um, in later, later classes, we'll have that. Okay, it's, later it's, classes. It can be very simple, like a cross. It can be more sophisticated. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can use the stones you can find on the street and just put them into the grid. You charge them and create them. I canceled my 3.30. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, uh, Spirit told me to cancel my 3.30, so I did. So good thing I did. <laughs> um, we, we got to go. We have other Reiki events. I, I do have a, another Reiki event, so I, I got to go. Well, I have there is an order you need to answer right now. Huh? Is there anything urgent which we need to answer? Any questions, urgent questions which we need to answer right now? What time is it now for you? Like, um, I think I miscalculated the time too, because uh, I was three thirty for me here. Okay. It started um, eleven a.m. Eastern, and it is eight a.m. Pacific. What time Pacific? Eight a.m. Eight in the okay. morning. Okay. Oh, it's. Eight in the morning when he starts. Right now it's yeah, noon. Right? Start, yeah. It's okay. noon there now. Yeah, twelve thirty. Okay. Yeah. okay. 12 I miscalculated also. Okay, All because right. it's three thirty three here. Okay, so it wasn't just the donkeys. <laughs> no, it wasn't Joanna, what did you want to say? <laughs> yes, uh, I wanted to ask because during the old session uh, I had to put my hands this way because I was feeling this strong strong energy uh, -huh. uh i don't know was it good was it a yes, good energy? amazing good yeah yes. it feels it feels very well, loving you, you just feel that flow enjoy that flow understand that you have a control over it you can pulse it if you want you're just kind of intend it to go and then slow down you invite it it goes and you can close it so it's like breathing it becomes a second oh, exactly. a second nature you use it like any other things. Yes. Remember um, that, was remember in, that uh, one that was talking about the energy balls? Yes. Um, what I was doing was I was trying to um, create energy balls and then um, put reiki in them and then send them. You know, yes. like it's balls. A way, but yes, of course, yes. I never used it, but I heard about it. It makes a lot of sense to me.
All right. All right. Thank happened. you, everybody. And uh, thank you. bless you all. Uh, thank you very much. And go ahead and heal the world. You are important. You will be important. And it is a door which is open. And beyond this door, there is a big path of transformation of yourself and the world. Thank you much. And I hope to see you next time, next uh, Sunday, the same, same time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good seeing you, everybody. Love you. Bye-bye. How do you get out of here? <laughs> Bye.